in the nightmare future of the 42nd millennium, we are riven by several curses, several faulty, cruel twists of universal design, things we are plagued with by our mere existence. Chief among them be our own emotions. Sentient creatures across the galaxy, be they human, Eldari, Orc, or of other kin, all the same feel the same trust, belief, hope, anger, fear, doubt, and love, if they're capable. Sentient life is a font of emotional resonance. And as the most cruel twist of this universe, that same emotional resonance is a fuel for a nightmare beyond our own reality. The primordial annihilator. Good morning, afternoon, and or evening, depending upon time zone. Ladies, gentlemen, and all those in between and beyond that binary of the internet, I welcome you back to the Lights roleplay, and more specifically, back to By His Shadow Peace, our wrath and glory epic. My name's Foxy. I'll be taking care of you for the evening. And along with me, I have four dedicated souls, four acolytes of his most holy Ordo Xenos Inquisition, who are ready to, well, scout out the enemies of the Imperium, root them wherever they may be found, castigate them in front of their godhead, and render judgment upon them. I can tell you all about them, but they're better at that than I am. So, in the order that I call you out, because I forgot what the order looks like, please feel free to tell me who you are, where you can be found on the internet, who you are playing this evening, and who's closest to your character's heart, you think, if anyone's there. Let's start with a close and personal friend of mine, someone who through the past decade has grown to not only know me, but shape me into the person that I am. Without this human being, I simply would not be the fox that you all see before you, and I'm ever so blessful, blessed and thankful for that every single day. You, of course, I know, I know I'm talking about the incredible and incomparable, the Unlight's one and only, Michelle. How are you, love? Hello. I'm doing good. Uh, I'm Michelle, and I'm... Don't exist on the internet, because I don't social media, so don't go looking for me there. Too but... busy serving the godhead of the Emperor! <laughs> yes, well, I am, cur I am playing Arya Yun Contour, our sister of battle, uh, Hospitalier. Uh, devoted to the Lord Emperor, God Emperor of the Imperium. One and of if there is anyone, is there anyone? The Emperor is a valid answer. I'll allow it. <laughs> I feel like, because I feel like they're they're sh they're really. When it comes to a sister, there shouldn't be anyone besides the Emperor. Fair. But yeah, it, it shouldn't be. Whether there's anyone or anything else is, well, Arya will keep that a secret, eh? Hey, well, everyone's human. Well, maybe. Speaking of which, <clears throat> the next member of our cast is someone who I have met through the glory and wonder of the internet, who through their time with me, I have felt realized that not only do we have great symmetry, uh, sorry, uh, synergy in character with the ability to tear the hearts out of ourselves and out and audiences all around us. We also make really good fast friends when we hang out in person as we've done that at least once at this point in our lives. Uh, I am of course talking about the one and only Meg Mysteria. There he goes again. <laughs> I know I had to do it. There you did that on purpose. I knew it. There he goes again. You couldn't tell by the segue. Never mind. We'll get there. Bye. Hello, everybody. I'm Meg and or Meg Mysteria. And tonight I get to bring back Laura Talone. Or is that actually her name? Something. Uh, as far as who's closest to her heart, uh, I would say it'd be. Someone she hasn't seen in a very long time that helped her when she was at her lowest point. Mm. Ain't that sweet? Ain't that quaint? Ain't that real? Just like real, real, real oh, just real, real wholesome. Real I feel like. It's, it's shame I'm gonna use that to rip that, rip your chest, your heart out of your chest. Nothing personal, except it's really, well, it's, it's, in, it's incredibly personal. Just you know, that, that, yeah, we'll, I know. We'll, get, we'll get there. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Before we get there. 
we have two more people to introduce. Up next, sliding back into the circle of people who I have known for at least a decade of my life now. Another person who I have had the pleasure of hanging out with several times in person, who I think not only shapes the core of some of my being, but who I think I spent many a time bouncing ideas off of, not just about myself, ourselves, but more just about the way the world works sometimes. Someone who I feel like my brain just takes a bit faster around, and I appreciate that more than anything else. With that said, I introduce you to once again, Neon Lights 1 and only Lan V. Dan. Hey, that's me. I'm Dan. Uh, tonight I'm playing Barris Corbin, um, our local uh, our local expert on the uh, on the scene. Um, and as far as who's closest to Barris's heart, uh, it would probably be his uh, brother that he does most of what he does uh, in order to protect and to provide for. Um, Everyone has to do something for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not ominous at all, I promise. And the music change wasn't, wasn't at all on purpose at all. It just it just happened naturally, I swear to God. Um, but we're holding that as we move to the last, but certainly anything but the least, member of our cast. Someone who I think has a talent, dare I say a knack, a spiritual calling to bringing out the best in people. Someone who cannot enter a room without causing at least a couple, a couple smiles. Someone who I know is a close and personal friend because upon seeing them for the first time in person ever, literally, they not simply walked up and said hi to me, but literally lifted me up in a hug. I will hold that memory close to me for a very long time. And I'm happy to introduce to you all, Neon Lights 1 and only, Turk. I thought, you, I thought you were going to introduce someone else to break my heart. We entered it, we brought someone new into the campaign. Fight them there just to fuck with you. <laughs> God, you are the best. Um, hey, everybody, I am Turk or Turk Extended. If, like me, you know it is blanky time. Uh, it's because it's my disguise, especially when I do this. You can't be seen in your disguise. I, no one will know. Um, Anyway, a lot of fans of Blanky Time, and I'll let you know this room is real hot, so you better appreciate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, yourself, I like will you. be all kinds of fine. I am playing for your viewing pleasure tonight, Zadkiel Delos, and rather for the pleasure of the Empire, uh, and, and the Emperor, long may he reign. I, the closest person to Zadkiel's heart, um, I would say is in, in shared in true space marine fashion both the emperor who he holds above all um and his and the mission he's entrusted him on uh because even though he's had a uh you know 20 carat string of bad luck uh absolutely i i think um I think it, it absolutely, uh, he shares that with his battle brothers um, and his care for them and his hope that his work here will, will redeem them in the eyes of the Imperium uh, for, for what they have done. And uh, he wishes them well. He wishes he could be there with them, spilling blood of Xenos, the heretic mutant. But uh, for now, he contends himself with still doing the Emperor's justice here. He thinks the rest of his squad are pretty cool too, but you know, you say closest to heart, man. It's tough. To I mean, hey, you gotta go with the answer, honestly, and that's I appreciate your honesty there. I want to call kill? out your BS. I want to call out your BS, but we can't do that, can we? <laughs> you witch. Yes. <laughs> You're the one who refuses to be a part of the Skype call. <laughs> I'm going to pin you to the wall and then shove a sword in your <laughs> chest. The Skype call. Do it! I dare you, coward. Before you murder each other, <laughs> I'm Foxy, aka Big Foxy. Also known as Favorite Fox, Philly's finest. Uh, I'm on the internet at Young Foxy, but much more important than that, I am the GM of this wonderful game. I play everyone that's not these four incredible, uh, lovely, incomparable acolytes, and uh, it's a lot of fun playing off of them and seeing where their stories will lead. So before we delve, so before we delve into into our session and figure out where we are from last time, let's uh, set the scene a bit, maybe perhaps. We find ourselves far away from uh, from Manufactorum B. Secundus, deep in the north, tucked into the mountains of of this planet of Keda Two. 
We move through industrial corridors, most of which are barren of workers, save for a, a skeleton crew moving around crates and containers, loading them onto pallets and large movable uh, and mar large serv servitor drones hauling massive containers away towards cargo bays. We move up into the rafters, into the shadows, into the quiet, where we can, fe where we can see figures, a group of figures, simply sitting. Some are idly playing at bits of their armor. Others are s sharpening blades or checking long, slender rifles. Others are fixing helms to their head. One among their number walks in, and one of them speaks up. You took long. Unexpected detour. Oh, that look on your face is devastating, Valir. It doesn't matter. We're moving the timeline up. And why is that? The ship isn't loaded yet. We usually attack in orbit. That was our deal with the Monkai. And he says, The deal has been altered. Another party is on to us. And I fear, if we don't act quickly, they will ruin everything we have worked for. Several of them begin to stand up. Again, checking those honed blades or swiping those rifles into into sort of in maglock sheaths, sheaths on their on their wa waists and backs. And what's the plan? He looks down and says, "Well, given that we can't just necessarily bring down one of our ships and have it stay in orbit while we while we while we bring the artifact up, we steal it." He says, pointing at an imperial pattern bulk transport hauler waiting with engines idling and cargo still being loaded onto it. And with that, we pass ourselves back to our heroes. Or, well, heroes are relative to Warhammer. Anyways, friends, you split up a bit before you, uh, before, before we ended last session. Two of you, I believe, are good friends, Barris and Zadkiel, headed off to go find a meeting place, perhaps an inn or a tavern or other place to rest and recover to meet up with the group. While two of you stayed back within the Administratum building of, well, B. Secundus to get some more information. One, by heading back into the records room in case of Arya. And in the case of Lara, by heading into Orme Uten's personal office where she encountered someone. Someone familiar. I guess I'll ask the question to you all, friends. Who should we check in on first? Lara, I'm assuming with your friend leaving you are probably heading out anything else you want to do in the room or actually you know what let's start the question first who should we check on first says no volunteers i'll cold call somebody you know i love doing that we should go. bother the two that went to go find an inn not a bad idea. Volunteer those two. So, <laughs> uh, in that case, I think it'll be fun if this is the way this goes. Zadkale, tell me what place the two of you decided on. Does that, tell me what place you two, you two decided on for meeting. Barris, tell me why you picked this place. And understand that when I'm telling you this, you all both have full narrative weight here. So, have fun. I believe we've found a uh, suitable spot. Uh, it's called something different than what the locals have been referred to it as uh, when they were speaking with Barris. But uh, the uh, raptor's nest uh, seemed fitting given our uh, moment of dropping in on this company. The raptor's nest, huh? Hmm. All right. Barris, tell me why this 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 little place, which uh, I'm assuming maybe not hold. I imagine this 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 place, the raptor's nest, is the kind of thing that you would call the equivalent of a hole in the wall, but a famous hole in the wall. Like it's it's not a, a this place is, is not made to hold lots of people, but there's definitely a good amount of people in it on any given day. So, Barris, why don't you tell me why you think you agreed with Zadkiel that this place was a good spot? 
I think that if we are trying uh, to the extent that we can to blend in, uh, it would make sense to choose uh, the most popular spot. Um, they are somehow miraculously able to accom uh, accommodate someone the size of Zach Fuel. Mm. Um, and also, when we confer, being meeting in a crowded area with a lot of people having their own conversations will make us harder to overhear when we discuss our findings. That makes more than enough sense. In that case, it sounds to me like you guys are finding sort of like a, a tucked away semi-private booth. You're not going somewhere like literally private. The private rooms are far too expensive for you to be worried about paying that, paying that much throne. But you can find a, a little booth off in the corner where you're certain, A, it's quiet enough to have a conversation without having to shout over each other constantly, even though you can definitely talk each other, each other in each other's minds at least somewhat. Uh, and B, you're certain that like there's enough convo going on around that no one's going to be, unless they're trying to deliberately eavesdrop on you. In that case, I'll leave you two with a few moments to sort of catch in and chat. Feel free to describe what you're doing as you enter, how you look, what you're settling in on, and what you're talking about while the two of you have the space to talk again. Seems like you two get stuck together often. Yes. I'll get the drinks. What I'll you getting? I'll find us a place to sit. And uh, um, we'll actually move to some like long bench situation that I imagine the crowd yeah. clears off of because. Oh yeah, no, Zad. The the bench you move to, there's like three or four people sitting on it. It's like kind of like like one of those kind of like booths with like a small wall around it. Like there are three or four people sitting there. You walk near it, and they all see you and get up. Well, yeah, they don't want to get catapulted off when it sits down. Um, I'm getting him. I'm getting us both uh, in order of the local specialty, and in Zad's case, I'm getting him double. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think a dub will be enough. For my emperor blessed physiology? Yes. Have acquired at least a quadruple. Well, you can get the next round then. <sighs> Very well. And he offers up a toast for you. Oh my god, your hand is invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Only when I flex it. Only when I flex guys, it. Guys, please. I love you so much. But please. Yeah. For those we cherish, we die in glory. And and he moves to clink your glass. To your health. And he'll clink against you with full might and probably just like not hurt, not enough to break the glass, but definitely enough to like move your your drink a little to the side there. Yeah. Chugs and puts down. I appreciate your commitment to staying sober on the case. Eh. Gotta, gotta stay focused when we need to, you know? Precisely. And this your choice of beverage will certainly keep us quite aware. Now, tell me, how long shall we permit that witch to scan her way about the libraries? I mean, she seemed like she had something she needed to do. And after hearing and so we get... what you've heard of that witch, forgive me, Commander, for my interruptions, but after hearing what you've heard from that inquisitorial leader, you still trust her. You make a good point. No, I can't say I do. <clears throat> but eh, you run into all, you need all kinds on this job. Yes, if and Brimrose many... trusts her, then... I don't know. I trust Brimrose. Meet many kinds of foe, those who would deceive. You have not seen the kinds of deception that our enemies are capable of, perhaps. But I have. Maybe, but you haven't lived the life of an Inquisition member as long as I have. I have seen And I find finish. that this work leads to what you this might not be a term you uh hear in the in your holy brotherhood, but the phrase is strange bedfellows. Sounds Sometimes like you gotta work with you gotta work with. 
just an expression, Zaddy. Calm down. There are no shades of guilt. Only the innocent and the guilty. What would you call the work that the Inquisition does and the means they take to and the means they take to achieve it? The work of the Emperor. Should he smile upon it. And the moment he does not, I suspect other inquisitorial agents shall correct the course. And if in the course of doing that work they take actions that the Emperor would otherwise frown upon, what then? Should the what Emperor is the true will of the Emperor? Should the Emperor frown upon an action? It shall be made known to the wider Imperium. We are, we are his justice. Our actions are his justice. So at least so I hope. Should I find the gavel of the Emperor is wilted and decayed, then it must be replaced. I don't think this conversation is getting where it is going anywhere. Does it need to go somewhere? I believe we were to I stay here not. until regrouped. I suppose we've done our part of the uh, the bargain. We have found place to safe refuge while we allow, again, I will note, a witch and mutant to Ari's peruse mother, imperial she? archives. And while I trust our beloved sister, I would never second guess the trickery of a witch. But what if this witch's trickery helps us carry out the will of the Emperor? Approved psychers I have no problem with. The Codex Astartes may not approve, but that is not said for the wider Imperium. As such, should she truly prove herself worthy in the Emperor's light, I will hold back judgments. But that has not been proven true thus far. You know what? I'll call this progress. And I think it's at that point that you both recognize you've both finished your drinks and it's time to grab the next round. I finish me up. Uh, I'll, I will I return with further refreshment. <laughs> Zad hops up to go step aside, again, noticing the crowd part and maybe look over and mumble just a tiny bit at the large, they're assuming abhuman, walking by them. Either an abhuman or someone who has never skipped leg, chest, or neck day in their life. You can't forget Oblique Day. That's true. Though they can't see it, I am wearing my ultimate disguise. My ultimate disguise. So, while we let that play out, Let's go ahead and check back in on one of our other two. Who should we head to next? I can volunteer if uh, Laura needs some time. I was hoping you'd say that. Oh yeah. You were spending time in the records room a little bit more after last session. Back in the administratum ter uh, 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 record archive room, which you have permission to be, given your Sororitas status. What are you looking for? I think what our so because originally what happened was uh, Arya was waiting for Lara, and last she knew, Lara had gone up to the uh, restricted record room. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think what Arya is going to do is l go up and look at what was disturbed, because as far as she knows, Lara should be in. The records room or maybe she stepped out but no, so the, the office lara stepped in you saw lara step into was separate from the the archive room well we didn't into. well she she saw some some random person oh that's fair yeah that's she, fair so, so, so the, okay so oh actually you're right you did you you saw a person who uh you, you saw a person step into the records room but so you follow after that person who is again at least seems to be just another, another normal person and you're aware of lara being able to uh, to alter form or, or doing things like that. You've, you've seen it at least a little bit, but you're not certain if it's her. So you're following after this person as you walk into the, as you walk into the records room and they don't seem to mind. They don't fault, say anything to you at first. You step into the records room and it's as you kind of, the door auto closes behind you that that person finally notices that there was someone behind them. They turn around and you would expect, because this is just a regular person, perhaps like 
shock or like a oh, you know, like a, a brief like recognizing that there's a person behind them. Instead, the person comes turns around and just. You're being lied to. I'm sorry, what? You're being lied to. Hmm. Is this in my head or is that like a? Yes, it's both. The person says it. Their mouth moves, but you also very resoundingly hear it in your head. And it's not Lara's voice that I'm hearing. No. Yeah, I think uh, Arya is immediately like, because this isn't someone. This isn't an inquisitorial person. Like, she's just gonna immediately ask, "Do you have a license?" I'm assuming psychers are licensed. Uh, the just tilts her head. You are afraid. You're a psyker. It is my duty to the Emperor to... Well. Send you off to the black ships. Else get you registered. The head quirks again. The voice now echoing in your head. So loud that it drowns out all other sound. Duty. Your fear kept you from that duty already. People you cared about died for it. Is this a yeah. psychic mm -hmm. attack or? It's a psychic attack, but you can feel pressure against your mind. Almost like nausea, like the world starts to tilt and whir around you just a little bit. It's 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 strange, but you're certain this person is probably causing it, this figure in front of you. I think what Arya is going to do is sort of and she's going to start praying start reciting a litany just for my sisters for my sisters and for, this, for the my voice, sisters and for the emperor the voice screams at you you failed your sisters you failed your emperor you failed you failed! And it just continues to scream that at you. You are afraid. You failed. You are afraid. You failed. And to the point that it doesn't sound like a human woman talking to you, it sounds like a thousand drowned voices screeching out of one throat at every corner of your mind. Hey. Considering I am linked to Arya's mind mm -hmm. via Skype call, mm -hmm. do I get, do I sense that pressure? So the funny thing is, and we'll get back to this, you're not feeling anything right now. No, no. Priya. Yes, I failed. And you can see just sort of like Arya just sort of like sort of clutch a hand to her head as they all died. Because you're afraid. Afraid of us. But I need not fear. The Emperor protects. The Emperor protects. The Emperor protects. I need not fear because the, em because the Emperor protects. Uh, There's no room for fear in the heart. The voice echoes in your mind. Pray he protects you long enough. And as it fades, you blink just once. And a very confused and terrified woman is looking up at you. S -s sister Sister? Are, are are you well? I think it takes a while for Arya to notice just Amber protects. The Oh 
My apologies. The prayers are fine, sister. However, if you could please release me. And you notice now, Arya, that until you put a hand up to your head, you had both of them around her throat. <coughs> My, it's been a long day. I. She just scurries away, doesn't say any more words, just immediately just out of the room as fast as possible. Doesn't seem like she's going to like running to anybody to be like, oh my god, come quickly, guards or whatever. She's just she's just getting away from you. And you are back in the records room. I mean, you never left it, even though the world sort of felt like it was tilting a little bit for a few moments there but it's quiet there again and you can see in the scene just a brief moment of hands trembling Arya takes a quick glance around the room where Where is Lara? Where? What was you know, that vision? It's hard to get a sense of anything right now as reality reasserts itself on you, Arya. You feel two things. One, a creeping cold sort of sensation that is now slowly passing its way out of your spine, slowly. Second, your hands feel like they've been holding your spear for a long time. Like you've been fighting in a long, long battle. One you've fought before. You still see the blood. Laura! Where are you? And with one smashed data plate and an angry sister shout, sounds like a perfect time to slide over and find out where the hell Laura is, yeah? So, uh, you were in the upper office when you had yourself a bit of a, an encounter conversation, one, one or two of those things. Uh, both of them, actually. Uh, you are now left alone to yourself in the office. And while you don't... Currently, you haven't felt any, any sort of psychic presence other than your own just yet. What are you up to with the space to yourself now? Investigate what I can of this office. These computers have always been a bit of a handle for you to get on. They're just trained for less elegant minds than yours. We'll say that for now. But there is an ingrained sort of like hollow padded or I guess touch padded computer system built into this this mostly wooden and steel desk you see in front of you. And Winston fights around. This is the wrong song. Why are you doing that to me? And so while so with that in front of you, you can pretty easily start to get a handle on how to navigate through it. There are effectively three things you can get a look at. There is schedules, there is records, and there are personal files. Start with schedules. Uh, I know that there's things happening with the ships, so... Mm -hmm. Or my Uten is currently... Uh, staying at a residential executive district uh, uh, staying quarters, not currently in this building, but in another administrative building elsewhere in, this, in, this, uh, in, in the Hive. He will be there for the next week until his uh, rally, at which point his convoy will literally, following the rally, is the convoy will stop to give his, to, for him to give his speech and then immediately begin heading off to his next city uh, in about a week or so's time. It also does seem like he has exactly one personal meeting scheduled in this office the day of that rally just before it's scheduled 
meaning he'll probably be stopping here before the rally takes place. For what reason? Well, you guess it might have something to do with the person you were just here talking with. Anything else? Let's snoop through some personal files. That sounds fun. The personal files you get are all... They're all mostly communications. They're old. A lot of them. Like, he doesn't seem to use this for, for personal comms a lot. In fact, a lot of them mostly date back at least a year or two is, like, the most recent ones. And some of them are just to, like, other random executives and politicos and uh, a few people in the mining guild. In fact, you notice there is a fact, uh, there is a, a, a an addressed uh, Gonda Oten, who, based on what you can tell from records and the content and the content of the of the message they talk, they talk about, you know, with the latest ore halls and the way the guild is handling, you wager this is someone in his family, perhaps a mother, who is looks like a uh, head of or a major player in one of the mining guilds, uh, which gives you that, so, which might ma exp explain why Odin is operating as a populist because the populists tend to be tend, tend to support the uh, mining guilds. Outside of that, older than that, in fact, about much older, say about 15, 20 years, you see a series of personal contacts back and forth between Odin and another, uh, and, and well, it's tough because there's a sort of executive personal uh, comm log that the uh, the uh, ruling governors, the uh, hive governors can use here on Kata 2, and they log by terminal, uh, which there's four total. So they are, of course, uh, effectively logged as one, two, three, and four with some like set, some sort of screen of numbers before them. Two, you can figure out is absolutely Odin's. All of these personal comms are with three. It doesn't give a name. In fact, they deliberately seem to not use their names. However, from what you're getting from looking at them, they are intimate. Very intimate. Oh my god, we found his sex. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but there's probably just a couple in there. Oh. Y'all send him? <laughs> Y'all sinning? Y'all sinning with a sister in the next room? They are sinning. Hey, listen. listen, the emperor doesn't say anything about whole, about about the holy coitus. I believe there are several chapters in the Codex Astartes which would not support this action. Yeah, well, he ain't an Astartes, motherfucker. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Citizens get to have all the fun. Says the guy in walking tank armor with a gun that's an automatic grenade launcher. I know, sure, but different all, yeah, kinds they, of fun. <laughs> Any case, Lara, that's pretty much all you're getting in the personal files. Anything else? What was the other set of files? Logs. Logs? Mm hmm. I'm gonna sneak through some logs if I can get away with it. A lot of them are shipping and mining manifests. There's dozens of them. You're certain Odin doesn't actually file and track these himself. He either has uh, a cert, like, either like a servitor on hand or like a menial who helps him out with it. Someone definitely takes care of this for him besides. He's not doing that himself. Or maybe he is. He's just super, super dedicated. Couldn't tell. Regardless, the biggest thing you're noticing is that you're getting all of those redacted logs you have been encountering in, through the, in, the, in the previous files, as well as m files of when they've been redacted. The redacting starts right around when you started, uh, actually, maybe about a year or two or so before reports of miss of missing tides on Cadus 2 started coming in, as you would have known in the briefing for this mission. You said a couple of years? Yeah, which I'll save you the trouble of having to think this out. All but confirms for you that the missing tides are almost certainly, at least to a strong part, Odin's responsibility. And you wager the other part of that responsibility goes to, once again, the person you were just talking to. Yep. Okay. That's about all you're getting out of the, out of the, out of the uh, computer, though. point in time do you think this puts me to the point where Arya is like you know basically shouting for me I'm so glad you said that you very quickly feel 
the slightest chill down your spine, you know it's certainly your psychic sense. It is subtle. So subtle you almost aren't capable of noticing it, which means it must be powerful. Incredibly so, whatever it was. It is brief. It is noticeable, just barely. It is followed by Arya shouting your name. <laughs> I will quickly uh, shut everything down and make sure it's left in the state that it's meant to be in before stopping at the door to make sure that she doesn't hear somebody in the hall before stepping out. Uh, you can hear a person's feet shuffling rapidly away from the hall, like clearly away from your direction. Uh, other than that, no. It seems like it's late enough in the day that people are starting to like not be on this floor too much. Quickly step out, let my form alter to how she knows me as Lara. Mm. And she's in the records room still, right? Yeah. Are you? Go to the record room. You enter and see Arya standing in front of a smashed data pad. Are you all right? And I think Arya is just going to walk right past you. Doesn't even turn. Doesn't even turn to see if you're looking okay. You can see that she's got her fist cl fists clenched. One of them incredibly hard around her uh, around her book. Another one is so tightly clasped around her own rosary that it's her her palm is bleeding. I think she's going to let the moment sit in silence for a second. I don't- I didn't catch it if you had said something before in response to the question. Oh. Uh, I think it was just let- Arya just d didn't respond. She just sort of went, we're going. Okay. Just let's go and just walked it. Okay. Well, that's a classic for leaving. Walk out. Love it. And, uh, she just kind of lets that moment sit in silence and won't follow Arya out. Thankfully, you are already seen with the sister, and thus no one questions you or the now clearly focused, frustrated, perhaps, looking sister who make their way out of the image shot on building. And it's at that point that you, uh, get a sort of, that you are able to, you know, f make your way through the streets towards the location you were calm, you were calmed by Boris and by Zadkail to inform of where you would all be meeting. The party will thus reassemble at the Raptor's Den. We find ourselves on the low streets of Kata 2. Zadkail, go. Has, uh, Barris been attempting to keep up with Zadkail is drinking? <laughs> I was also wondering about this. That's well, up to you. That's up to you then. I was just gonna ask, like, how drunk are we by the time? I <laughs> am probably I would, stone I would say sober. the question is, yeah. So yeah, the Zadkale is probably stone sober entirely. You, oh, yeah. the question becomes, have you been trying to keep up with Zad's drinking? I think I have, and like, Ferris can probably hold his liquor well enough that he's still like on his feet, but he is just like you're leaning, definitely. He's leaning, and like he's trying to get. Zad to like, like he's trying to teach him how to sing, like Homeward Bound, <laughs> in the bar. Hilarious. Like, uh, look. No, you're fine. No, you're fine. I love it. <laughs> this is yeah, actually right. the scene that uh, that the two of the two of your compatriots enter to. In fact, it's very not hard to find your two friends at the back of the bar in tavern brothel. It's really hard to tell, honestly. A lot of things are happening in this building. Uh, but you can find them in a corner as you can hear Barris singing over the crowd din just barely and see Zadkale's hulking form. 
<laughs> Bind me not to the past. <laughs> Chain me not to the bow. Set me free to find my calling. And I'll return to you somehow. <laughs> See, it goes like that. Similar to some Imperial Guard songs I encountered. Though there's little mention of screw guns in yours. I like yeah, the ones we're a sim it, Mine comes from a simpler place. Well, it is no Imperial chant, but I suppose if it draws strength in your heart and the hearts of other Imperial citizens, I shall not uh, infringe upon it. Now, are you well, brother? You lean. Yeah, and you adjust your back up. So I'm fine. Uh, have you been serving yourself alcohol in my place? What do, you, what do you mean in your place? I've been here with you. I've simply been asking for whatever we were served previous. Uh, assuming yeah. we're light refreshment. It's, it's the local specialty. Well, a, a rejuvenating beverage, certainly. Yeah. You know, like even I've heard of this place. I never thought I would actually come here. Like I may as well, in I may as well enjoy the refreshments. Has your drink been poisoned? You seem. Mm. I'm telling you, I'm it's fine. It is to this scene that the two of your comrades show up to your table too. Ah, sister! He clinks his drink down. It is well you have brought the witch with you. Quickly, we must reconvene. Right. Yes. Um. Are you troubled, sister? Local specialty? <laughs> I will pass, but I thank you. And I think Ari is actually going to reach into try her to 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 uh, how the hell do you even pronounce it? Kyurgen tools? Yeah, Kyurgen. Ky 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 yeah. Ky it, Ky it, 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 it's Greek and weird and Greek and a Latin like, based setting. Like, Who knows? Like, like most things in this system, any case. <laughs> and she's actually going to uh, pull out. Um, I'm assuming it's some kind of like detoxification. Um, <laughs> just, <laughs> Detox. Like, <full. laughs> <laughs> and just slap it on Varus's neck. S some Imperial Guards call it the anti-fun patch. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was fine. Ah, so you were poisoned. Ah, no what? matter. Uh, a, ma a simple thing. We will instruct justice from our uh, barkeeps later. In the moment, please, sister, sit. And which you may also, though emotions on the other side of the table. I think Arya's gonna gladly just take a seat and sort of think into it with the sort of like exhausted, like she looks pale, like a little bit, maybe a little bit clammy. Zekiel, absolutely, if you're choosing to sit next to him, put a hand on your shoulder. Be assured, sister, whatever energy you've exerted in this day has been in the Emperor's love and light. I am certain of this in you, for you are a blessed citizen. Oh, that's like flirting, kinda. I think Ar Arya just. I thank you, my lord. Just but I think sister. the emperor is sending me his test as well. He tests his us. Trials. He tests us all. He tests us all, but we preserve and we prevail in his love and light. <sighs> what have you learned? Well, I think Arya is a little bit out of a loss for words because she didn't really learn anything much after, <laughs> after she left. <laughs> I learned I'm really fucking traumatized, guys. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I think she, I think what, what, what she is going to mention is I know not what it was, but some kind of... Maria, I'm going to pause you before you speak. As in your mind, you are recognizing that... And you have been drilled in this understanding since your days in the Scala, and every day as you, in your service as a sister. 
declaring unrecognized psychic malefica could mark one as tainted, as heretical, as mutated. And regardless of which of those categories one falls into, the sentence is most certainly not only death, but removal from any hallowed records one might be a part of. Bear that in mind before you say anything about what happened to you. No, it's just been a long day, my lord. I'm just... And I think Arya's... But, like, I think Arya at the same time is thinking... Perhaps another time we should discuss. And I think Arya is just kind of like, was that real? And I definitely think like it's like under her breath. Like, I think Zadkiel, Zadkiel, and probably Lara definitely hear it, but uh, Barus probably did not. Well, I believe the question was, what did you all learn? Forgive me, Lara. I did not... I was short with you. I was not... did not query as to what you discovered in the records room. It's fine. I found that Ormehutin has certainly been modifying shipping logs. Is she delivering the report? Uh, and I think, uh, uh, (laughs) I think Arya is going to be... I can handle him if you're not feeling up the roof. Yeah, uh, Arya just... surreptitiously slides her a glass of the local specialty. He's like, those wonders for frayed nerves. Uh, at this point, I think I think uh, Arya has had enough of psychic shenanigans and is just going to down it like no in one gulp. That a girl, right? <sighs> yes, Zad, she is delivering the report. You're welcome to listen to her. Nay, my mind is a creation of the Emperor and shall not be infringed upon by the unclean. <sighs> R9 is stinker. <laughs> it's that extra level of complication. <laughs> it's fine. But Sorry. Continue. She continues. Bomeyoten has, has certainly been modifying shipping logs. A Corsair band has been taking advantage of it, working with him. Wait, and sorry. Corsairs. Corsairs. Raiders. So, pirates? Well, so, here's the thing, you know? I, I also have a question about the use of this particular language, because I am old. Yeah, yeah so, so I have a question, just because, like, I'm, I'm not old, but I'm traveled, so it's like, do I know what that is? So, here's the thing. Um... Barris, you're on the right track. You're certainly thinking like, okay, so like pirates, you know, like pirates or, you know, like, you know, like something like that. Okay. And you're not wrong to think that because, well, that's certainly a term given. However, most of those will usually just be called pirates or, you know, like designated by whatever the local sector they operate in. So you, the term Corsair is typically invoked by the Imperium for a specific category of enemy they encounter sometimes. Uh, Zad, you're old older, in fact, and you've been in quite a few fights with uh, enemies of the Imperium, I'd say. So the term Corsair... Well, that, uh... I believe the Badab a... sector had some Corsair problems. Mm-hmm. And in fact, Zad, when you hear the word Corsair, there is a single word that lances through your brain sharper than anything else. Eldari. And I think there is that no immediate other response if the group has asked 
Corsairs, like, out loud. That was correct, right? Everyone was like, Corsairs? Or was I, or did I forget the last, like, five seconds of that? No, I think, well, definitely Arya is very confused. It is effective. <laughs> yeah, but you did vocalize Corsairs, because, again, not part of the Zoom call. Right. Uh, I think I think Barus did. He mentioned uh, Corsairs, and then like, aren't those pirates? And yeah. we'll smack the table. Eldari scum, flake this planet. I mean, I'll make a strength check. <laughs> what? Sure. Why not? I okay. Wait. I strength test coming in. I. Oh boy, I mean, uh, oh, oh, the no. oh, no. yeah, yeah. The table fully like concaves in. It is made of like a metal that's kind of bracketed up against the wall, so it doesn't so much like completely shatter as it just like fully bends into a U from the force of Zadkale's punch. Just <laughs> Haldari here in this sector. We um, must move quickly. Hey, before we proceed, you got a rat. Uh, one. You got a one on the last day. <laughs> oh, I know. Should we be worried? Maybe. For now, just RP. Have fun. Considering we're in a very public bar. I'm about to die because he smashed the tail. <laughs> You'll be fine. I'll be there with you. <laughs> I think Arya, like, what, like as as soon as you mentioned that they're, that they're all Dari, Arya sort of just... Venus here infringing on the Emperor's justice they strike at our territories like vermin nibbling at the edges infesting what they cannot take then we must root them out my lord agreed and if this uh, politician, this so-called leader, would conspire with the Zeno, he is unclean and to be purged, not only under his divine light, but under our imperial seal. So fits all a Zeno's fate. Shall we march, my lord? Nay, a march too formal. And our imperial duty is still to the Inquisition. An arrest should be made, a turnover to the Arbites. But I yield to the wisdom of our captain, as he knows this terrain better than I. What be our next move to apprehend this traitor? Here's the problem. We're talking about a pretty, pretty heavily supported politician. Like, uh, like one with a major, major following from the lower classes. And like, I know y'all might be a bit removed from politics, but from what I've seen, someone, if someone can captivate a crowd well enough, the crowd will rally behind them more than even their ideals or their policies. They'll do anything for them. They need can't no just... idea but the Emperor. <sighs> he tempts them well, away. I don't know if I would call it that, but you can you can cultivate a lot of loyalty with a few nice words around here and a few rosy promises. <sighs> what I'm saying is, if we just march up and arrest him, like we might have more than just him and his guards to deal with. But. If we can prove and make public the proof that he's conspiring with Xenos, I don't know if even that would fly with most of his supporters. Do we have enough evidence to do that? Well, 
They would seem to may... identify them as Corsairs. That indicates enough solid proof on their end. They have proven their usefulness and may yet be redeemed. I told you. Alright. There is a shipment that is leaving the spaceports too. You think it's it'll be targeted? Good. I believe so. Then we should be aboard it. The act, catching them in the act might uh, might be might be the most convincing proof that we can get. And if we are enough quick to about convince it. his followers. And if we are quick about it, May Return will be here the next week. Hmm. After that, he will move to his next location for another speech. And I say we don't delay. Seems like we, uh... I vote that as our next course of action. We move to escort the vessel as it is attacked. Securing its safety and capturing Xeno scum to testify against a traitorous governor. Solid plan. The Emperor shines his light upon all truths, such as he has to this one. Are we all in agreement then? Our equipment is here. We will be ready to reach the spaceport in no time. Yeah. With the plan we... laid out. I'm sorry, let's cut, please. Did we inform the Inquisitor of our next steps? Which and one? that he is being looked for from Rose. I think that would be wise. Perhaps I can handle find that somewhere less like. public. Seems like a good idea. Shall we move to our lodgings? Let's. Well. As you all start to move to find a place to at least get a little bit of shut eye, uh, you reckon you can probably get at least a good five, six hours in and still make it to the spaceport with time on schedule and everything, you know, without too much issue to keep yourself on track as long as you don't oversleep. Hope you're all good alarm setters. Speaking of alarm setters, we'll be right back in about 10 or so minutes as we give our players a little bit of time to get some rest, shake off the nerves of recent incursions and or reveals, let them figure out what their plans are going forward. And as we come back, we'll come back to what I hope might be the spicier part of the session. We'll see y'all in just a few minutes, all right? Take care. And we return to the dune-swept plains of Kata 2 as the party's Goliath truck slowly grinds its way across the dunes, stopping in front of, well, you would think it would be an Imperial checkpoint where guards would be stationed, except, well, the guards aren't there. At least, no living ones are. I'm not going to make you guess what did it. As you can see, uh, a series of very of nano-fine, thin blades embedded in the chests of the one guard. You can see slumped over the uh, the turnstile terminal. Thankfully, he's slumped over it in a way that he pressed down on the button, which means the turnstile is up. So, while the scene is grisly, it does leave your passage towards Arctis spaceport undisturbed. Acolytes, you are able to breach through the dust-swept uh, slowly turning from rock to ridden con uh, rock, crete, and metal. Uh, sort of early loading bays and landing pads on the outside of the massive sort of rock, crete, and steel bastion of, and, of squares and uh, rectangles that is Arctis Spaceport. Imperial symbols and skulls abound across various portions of it. Numbers and high, gra and high, and high gothic symbols emblazoned to denote certain landing bays, entrances, control rooms, and other things. Otherwise, there are several guard posts that are similarly abandoned. In fact, it doesn't seem like there's really much of anyone around here. Otherwise, you are all able to dispatch, grab your gear as you want, and 
well, converse amongst yourselves as you'd like before you enter. As I am so fond to say, and surprisingly haven't said for two hours in the session, darlings, the scene is yours. Um, if possible, during the ride over, uh, Sadkiel would have armored himself. It rocks the cabin a fair bit, but doable. And uh, we'll exit the back of our uh, vehicle taking thunderous steps down onto the uh, plains here. The enemy abounds. It must be about our business. We must all be on our guard. And I think Arya kind of steps... So, so, uh, wait, did that help change while Arya was still in the back with it? To be fair, I mean, to be fair, I am always wearing the carapace. Fair enough, fair enough. So, he's never he nude, around. but if you felt any apprehension about watching an Astartes don his armor. I think Arya had just very oh, politely okay. turned away. <laughs> It just hear a series of clunking and pistons firing and, you know. It is okay. You can look now. Yes. I am Mama's sister. Then I shall do so as well. And uh, Ari will also don her battle sister armor that goes over her robes. Mm. Two power-armored giants, although one much larger than the other, step out of the back of the Goliath truck, shaking the back of it as they as they trod onto the rock creek ground of the of the of the outside of the spaceport. Lara and Barris, what are you two uh, looking up to, doing, saying, interacting with in this moment? I mean, Barris's gear is a lot less bulky than theirs, so I just kind of figured he had it on him at most times. Most likely. But I figure I'm also probably driving. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your parking brother. situation? <laughs> uh, your voice echoes out around the outside and bounce, bouncing off of the, of the canyon walls of the spaceport. Hmm. Ready as I'll ever be. Good then. Let us make quick work of this enemy, so we may bring the traitor to justice. Sounds like a plan. Lari, right, coming. All right. Uh, steps out of the cabin is. There's just the, I'm ready. Do the Skype call. Skype call. God I'm damn. just gonna call it. I'm just gonna call it the Skype call. There's... I'm aware. I just... For new viewers of our audience, Lara is a psyker and is capable of communicating psychically with other members of the party. And thus, that's what they do. Excepting our mute. space brain. She is mute. That's true. She's mute. She is legitimately injured. She, she's she is incapable of speech and thus communicates psychically with, with the members of our party. Accepting our space so marine, who is, who is a, a stubborn bitch baby about it. I mean, look, Arya is a bit begrudging too, but she also cannot begrudge someone who 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 physically cannot speak. Well, as you all step out onto the empty spaceport, you move yourself towards the docking bay doors, which are closed, but the access panel outside is easily accessible, and any of you can step up and press it. There's a hiss of release pressure as those gates grind themselves open. Inside, you can see sort of a, a sort of entry gal gan a gantry way. Uh, so, as you all step in, you find yourself surrounded with the sounds, the sounds of hissing gears and slowly turning motors in in the spaceport. This facility is clearly still online, and while there are no humans you can see alive, servitors are still working to move crates and handle maintenance tasks and work through things. As you enter into this large, or you move through a, through a, a core, a, through, enter this large corridor, the, the wall stretching high, maybe 20, 30 feet up above your heads, and the corridor itself being wide enough to encompass maybe 20 people wide if you needed to, you will find yourselves in this long corridor, which you are certain leads down to a main loading bay.
this. As we make our approach cautiously. So, if you're all assumingly approaching, caution to the uh, caution aware, weapons up, and keeping your eyes up and, uh, and focused. I don't know what the witch said. What does my commander say? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he says, you're going in front, tank man. <laughs> I am not a tank. That is a different design. I am a hammer. Or a sword. But I shall take the lead in this place. That kills large armor boots step forward and begins to crunch in front of the, in front of the group. I think Arya's going to take the back, and she's going to actually just plane starts singing a battle hymn the sort like the sort of pre-battle hymn that she used to sing with her uh, with her other sisters before they would be deployed onto the field hmm. Arya, the sounds of your hymn begin to echo out through the canyon out through the cavern through, through the hallway corridor walls as you all approach i should probably stop the uh, the wind sounds if y'all are inside now apologies and as you are walking through this corridor letting the sound of your hymnal slowly bounce off of the walls here. You slowly approach this entryway to the open door, wherein you can see a large bulk, a uh, square figure of a bulk lander docked on the pad. Its engines are awake and idle, indicating that within maybe uh, perhaps, you know, 15, 20 minutes of prep, this thing could be ready for takeoff. The last of its cargo bay doors is still open with a few servitors still loading uh, crates of cargo into it. Through that open cargo door, you can see a massive central storage chamber wherein something is encased in a massive armored storage container. It is impossible to tell what it is, but it is large enough to be able to take up fully a third of the ship's cargo bay. The servitors are the only movement you, mo you notice in this room for the most part. The servitors and the shadows slowly slinking out of the walls. They are human-like figures. Tall, slender, armored, a dark, deep crimson color, color uh, covering them in plates. Their helms are angled and with visors with small, with small face plates about them. Some of you, in time, have seen these warriors before, or at least warriors similarly armored. Eldari are not like humans. They are, well, for lack of a, pre of a previously used term, more elegant in the way they move the way they glance at you, the way they brandish long pistols and swords, others holding two-handed two -handed blaster weapons at you. They walk, not raising their weapons at any of you, but simply walking to the middle and turning, standing, as one figure walks out amidst them. He is armed, but he is not helmed. His face is porcelain white, perfect without blemish, his ears long and slender, going back behind a long ponytailed hair of pure black. You are all staring in front. Voice speaks in a very garbled, not garbled, but inelegant low gothic. Greetings, humans. We have been waiting for you, as you all see. Corsair fell arch Valir. Cue the, uh... Oh no, he's hot. Shag, <laughs> <laughs> uh. oh no. State your business, Zeno. Am I safe on the street, by the way? Uh, I don't think so, actually, unfortunately. But I'll post the art in, in the uh, in Roll20 for people who want, to who want to thirst over the hot elf. Sorry, the hot space elf, excuse me. <laughs> Speaking of that hot space elf. Yeah, I've leveled a weapon at the um, Zeno uh, mutant creature that seems to form a mockery of mankind. Speak your business and make it quick. Uh, he looks at you. Has your 
what do you call them? Psyker? Friend? Not informed you already? It has been noted I am not part of the Skype call. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it hell, God damn it. But I need me. not know their business to know you are not to be on this world. Whatever treaties you might have with the local governance do not apply to me, and I will apply the Emperor's justice where it sees fit. As you engage in this uh, in this rant, he just looks over, staring directly at Lara. And he kind of chuckles a little bit, just barely, uh, and just... Really now, Edelvada, I begrudgingly understood your working with living around the Monkai, but this armored monkey in front of you is loathsome. How do you stand? No, it's not in our Skype call. She is silent for that. There's a moment in Felix's mind where it's he is infuriating. Is she talking about Zad or is she talking about Zad? <laughs> uh, Phil, uh, Valir, directly back to you, quietly, just quiet. Now then, should I gallivant out loud about my plan in the manner of some annoyingly human villain? Or shall we just? I think that is the most honorable thing you have spoken since you Wait, began to us or is he foul to filth. Him? Oh, to all of you. Okay. Give the command, my leader. I will have this foul thing splayed upon the floor. The other Corsairs all also begin to slowly begin to brandish their weapons and raise them up as some of them begin to already start moving into cover positions, sliding down behind large crates or, in, or, or moving them, their, the bulk of their bodies behind pillars. Commander, just... I regret well, to inform you the, com the enemy has us surrounded. It will be bloody, but they will die. Well, we've got taxes to collect. The Emperor's tribute is the most gifted prize. Sister, so, uh, begin the litany! I don't know what I'm gonna sing, but yeah, I think uh, Arya is going to actually just, just be like the loudest song, the hymn of, of the first hymnal she can think of a battle litany. Starts Arya to begins to break. blare the litany of the Emperor Valorant. It, the words echoing off of every wall, cavern, pillar, concrete, uh, co uh, concrete bunker, and, and bit of armor here, as she begins to scream, as she begins to scream and shout the words of, pu of purity, kind of building and swelling in all of the, well, at least imperial believing hearts around her. Valir tilts his head a bit and just, the Monkai and their prattling singing is annoying. Silence them. And with that. We'll stop ourselves in the combat. You all know I'm a big fan of the old popcorn initiative. So players, why don't you go ahead and tell me who's going first? I mean, I'm probably just going to take a shot at Valir's head. <laughs> in that case, Barris, do you want to go first? Yeah, do it. Do it, Barris. Sure. Remove the Monkai's head. Do yourself a service to the Emperor. Wait, aren't we the Monkai? Uh, aren't we the Monkai? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that... Do I just make an attack roll, or do I... Yep, yeah, you sure do. If you want to get another action to aim, you're allowed to. It would give you an extra oh. thing to you and the blue I didn't turn. tell you all about my secret origin, Claire. No. <laughs> 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 uh, I got three... Wait. Uh, five icons? Two, uh, two sixes and a four. That is... Five is exactly enough. Go oh, ahead and, roll and uh, uh, and one from the wrath. Wrath critical. Go ahead and roll that. Uh, that, go ahead and roll your damage for me. Okay. One icon damage mod by default is. Yeah. What's your base damage for your gun? 
Um, a nine, I think. Okay, cool. Uh, so with a nine plus your one d six, which uh, which which rolled an icon, that gives you a total of ten damage. Ten damage is just enough to beat his resilience. So, uh, Boris, you draw your hand cannon, aim and fire at Valir's head. You don't even see his arm move. The next thing you know, his sword is just to his side. The bullet clearly cut in twain. It does still nick the side of his cheek. He looks at you and just quaint and begins to run forward. Uh, In that case, I'm going to have a group of my Corsairs go. Uh, I'm going to say exactly five of them are going to turn and aim at... They're they're, going to split their attacks. We're going to put... Let's start with... Yeah, we're going to start with uh, a first group going at Barris since you shot first. We'll start off with a few of them going at t- at you. Uh, that's going to be... Let me start off with a roll real quick. Oh, oh I should have just rolled my normal die. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that is six Ooh. successes. Barris, what's, what's your defense? Um, Three. That's enough. Uh, let me go ahead and roll damage. Uh, what's your... um? There you go. Let me get... Oop. Uh, what's your what's your resilience? Uh, seven. Oh, well then luckily enough, Barris, you have to literally dive for cover as a flurry of shurikens fly by your head and embed themselves in the metal pillar behind you. You are certain if you were a, a fraction of a second slower, they would have dealt some damage to you. I think I made him mad. Uh, a few of them, the rest of them will hold another, another one of you guys go. So who wants to, who wants to go next? Also, friends, feel free to flavor your attacks more if you'd like. You know, we know we love a good narrative first combat here. Might I? I ain't stopping you. I, then I will proceed with the Emperor's Justice. Uh, all right. Uh, Zadkiel, as he notice, as he, like, moves slightly to adjust now that, um, this foul creature, I uh, is trying to dodge attacks from a most holy ancient of the Inquisitor, which is in and of, in and of itself a crime. Uh, it'll levy at him, uh, somewhat familiar with the movements of the Eldari warriors, and attempt to empty a, uh, a few rounds of his bolt gun into their leader, knowing to work his way down the chain of command to weaken their resolve. Uh, so I am gonna fire a bolt gun that is 10 with, okay, one, two, three normal successes, four extreme successes, and also I rolled a wrath, a one on my wrath die though, because that seems to be my curse. (laughs) Hey, hey, you right, this is not good, (laughs) but... Well... I will note that wrath complication as uh, you begin to empty the bolts around in. I'm going to spend a ruin point oh, so that please. they can roll determination. Uh, what? Uh, go ahead and roll your damage for me, Zad. Uh, for me, Zad. All right. The damage pours forth. What you got for me? Uh, I don't know if I did this right. Uh, yeah, I rolled three. I rolled. So sorry. It, it's one d six. It looks like I rolled a three total. Hmm. I. 1d6, 4, CS, I... I've completely blanked on the rules in the last last, last, uh, last time, but I... I it's fine. I, so just for the, sake, for the sake of number, you're going to roll your base damage die, is that, is that, is that number? And then you're going to roll your, your your number of extra damage die, the ED number on your on your, on your weapon. You're going to roll that many d6s. Okay, so I do have... So it's 1d6, uh, but I do have an ED of plus 1, so I'll roll an extra d6 here. Which is a 6. I... Cool. So, uh, you swing for Valir. He once again starts to turn, and as he's running, cleaves your bolts and plane as you're running at them. Those bolts, however, do still explode and begin to shatter and to impact his armor. You definitely deal at least some damage to him. You don't deter his stride at all. Uh, as he's moving, several I, of those Corsairs... And- I, I like to begin moving mm-hmm. up towards him, just steadily watching as a round. As- Absolutely. He is, so he's moving. He turns to the side as as you're running towards him. As he turns, three Corsairs come up behind him and they all jump with their swords up high and dive for you, Zad. They are going to make an attack. Uh, 
So let me add in some mod because there's multiple of them doing it. I'm I'm I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, I think for some reason damage is is wrong here. It should be a ten. My damage for this is a ten. Yeah, it's ten. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, so, no, okay. I, you, I, you got you got it. No, no. If you if you got it, I'm sorry. I find the reference one thing. Anyway, you're good. Uh, what's your defense? My defense is four. Well, then I beat it. As the corsairs begin to come down on you, you have to bring your bolter up, start defending as they start trying to slash and, and hack at weak points in your armor. Uh, let's roll some damage. Uh, they did not roll great. Uh, what's your resilience? My resilience is 11, my lord. They don't damage you. <laughs> as those swords begin to just uh, plink against your armor, one of them literally slamming against your pauldron as you, sh as, you, as, you, as you jam into it, the other two catching on your bolter, as they keep trying to move around and circle around you, as you're now kind of engaged with these three Corsairs. If, if, if I could flavor it, I'd say he, Please. like, as he's, as he's putting it down, his bolt gun kind of sits and he clinks into a holding position, and in its place, he will draw out a combat knife, and he'll simply, you'll hear in a low voice, a poor choice. Oh, that's cool as fuck. I love that. To dance with the son of Sanguinius! And, uh... Well, then. Uh, we're back over to y'all. Who's up next? Wanna go, Michelle? Do you want me to go? Uh, yeah. I'm aging. Okay, sure. Uh, who's closest? Uh, there, so Valir is still running towards, uh, towards all of you. He is veering off to the left, clearly aiming towards Lara. Uh, the rest are still kind of, like, slowly advancing through cover up towards you. Three of them are directly engaged with Zadkiel, who was in the front. Like, they're, they're swinging, they're fighting in melee with him right now. Uh, the rest are kind of all in cover at various sort of groups. There's a couple of them close to you. You, if you're looking at numbers, there's about 16 Corsairs total, and then also Valir. Okay. Um, the one, cl the, uh, the, the group closest to me, mm -hmm. I dedicate this kill to the, to the Lord Emperor, that he, that he may eradicate these Xenos with his light, and sh she's going to pull out her Laz pistol, one, one hand still on her shock Naginata, which is lit up with electricity and aim and fire. All right, go ahead and give me an attack roll. All right. Keep in mind for context, since y'all finally attacking these guys, the Corsairs operate as a mob, meaning the way this works is you roll a normal attack roll, but for every number you are over their defense, that's another person you hit. Uh, that's uh, two regular successes, two uh, exalted successes, and I rolled a no two wrath. on the wrath die. No wrath. Grand total of six successes. Uh, that puts you well over their defense. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Actually, no, 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 roll it, roll it. Because they're a mob, they only have one health. So, uh, as you, as you draw your last pistol, you aim and let off three quick volleys. You put rounds directly in the middle, in the, like, the middle neck areas of three Corsairs. They go spiraling out on the, onto the ground around, uh, onto the ground around you as three of them drop dead. All right. They also don't count as adversaries, yes? Nope. Gotcha. Good. Then we're going... Uh, then I think Arya is going to move and plant herself right in front of our squishy Barus. All right. In which case, we'll pass it back over to the Corsairs, and they are going to have... We're going to have Valir go, actually. No, no, we're going to have the last Corsair group actually go. That's totally fine. Uh, the last Corsair group's going to go. Uh, there were, let's see, three of them dove for, dove for, uh, dove for, Bear, uh, dove for Zad five shot at a uh, at bear at, at bears we're gonna have the rest of them shoot at you uh at at, at you actually as we're gonna do so here comes a couple of blast blaster attacks michelle uh what's your defense what's your uh your defense Ooh. well they just barely beat you what's your resilience nine uh in that case you also don't take any damage <laughs> As you uh, as you are able to as you are able to sort of uh, as as shots begin to begin to pile onto you as they raise loud blasts begin to pile onto you you dip a bit back in a cover cover and sort of clamp your armor up against the, against against one of these pillars and some of them hit onto your spawners and sort of spiral off your shoulder pads but none of them uh, go into or make any impact with you. If Here, if I could take the uh, the take Please. narrative control a little bit, I think Please. because because um, 
Arya is planted right in front of Barris. She sort of like grabs Barris, like shoves him behind, and then sort of dives behind cover before. Yeah. All right, and with three of them dead, that means we get this many uh, shuriken pistols. Uh, they're actually going to split two at you and two at Barris. You're both close, close together. Here comes the ones at you, ones at you, Arya. They're going to get through your defense. So more sure. So now they're raising. Uh, other creatures are now closing in with small pistols that you notice are shooting again those same thin, bladed sort of like sharp, almost like white glowing crystalline shards that are piercing through the metal of the metal around you. Uh, they are going to roll their damage now, and I'm pretty sure they have a cool thing. I could shift the die if I wanted to. Oh, I did. Yeah, I'm going to shift shift the die for three more uh, extra die on the damage. Let me go ahead and roll this real quick. Uh, so we just yeah. Okay, cool. So. Uh, what's your uh, def your resilience? Nine. You're gonna take three wounds. All right. Uh, let me go find that. As even through the pillar, you, uh, Barris, you watch as a couple of shards of shuriken go through parts of Arya's armor, and well, you assume through parts of her. Uh, uh, can I uh, can I can I say that uh, Barris is technically undercover behind me? Absolutely. So Barris, you will gain plus. Two, you, 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 so you, you count as plus uh, plus two higher defense for this uh, this attack against you. Here it comes. So what's your defense, including plus two higher? Uh, five. Uh, that's enough. Five. So yeah, uh, with Arya literally covering you, Barris, those sh the shots that would hit you just plink and slide off for of armor. You are kept perfectly safe from these attacks. You are noting though, those shuriken pistols are deadly, incredibly sharp. You're not certain how well Zad's armor would hold up, but Arya's. It's holding up well, but it's not going to keep her safe for super long. You, you're what you wager. Oh, you a drink. Well, perhaps after we've put these, you know, scum in the ground. It's definitely easier when they're not shooting at us, or when we're not being shot at. Speaking of being shot at, we pass back on to you guys. That leaves Lot, I'm pretty sure, yes? It means... You have several Corsairs who are moving through cover, three of them who have do who have dove for your Space Marine teammate, and one, who you know personally, diving directly for you. He's not reached you yet, though. So... First thing she's going to do is she's going to draw a blade that has been sitting at her hip, and as it draws, there's almost this... It seems to vibrate and hum, uh, adding a little bit of that song to what reverb is left of Arya's litany. Um, and it vibrates more as she taps into the warp looking at where these people, these Eldari are moving through cover. Uh, and I'm gonna... Can I cut you for reveal. just one second, by the way, before you before you fin finish no. the reveal? I, no, go, no, go ahead and make the roll. No, make the roll, make the roll, you're fine, make the roll. But I wanna know, as Lara draws this sword and begins to channel the warp into it, uh, Arya, Zad, and Barris, you've all seen Imperial Sanctioned Psychers. You've seen them use what are called force weapons, weapons made to have a Psyker channel their power through them. This weapon does not look like an Imperial Standard power weapon or force weapon at all. There is an elegant curving slide to this blade, the way it sort of has this, these ridges around its back, a gem sitting in the middle of its palm, of, of its, uh, around its uh, guard pommel. It looks like nothing you think you've seen commonly around here or any other, well, planet you've seen. You've not seen this sword commonly anywhere before. Lara, go ahead and cast that reveal. Uh, that is two icons, a four and a six on the wrath die. I think that's enough, yes. If so. All right. In that case, tell me how, what happens on reveal. Uh, reveal is almost a sense of light eliminating from these targets. So wherever they're moving, even if behind cover, they are seen. As they do not benefit from cover. All right, well, that's gonna suck for them. Uh, so, you are able to easily illuminate the closest the closest cluster of, of Corsairs in that glowing light. 
And it's just as you wave that hand that you look over and see one Corsair diving straight for you as he'll now take his turn. Valir, Valir leaps up, l landing with one foot on one of the cargo crates and then jumps into a spinning twirl as he brings a sword up and, s and it hums as he swings down on you, Lara. Uh, he's going to make an attack against you. Uh, here it comes. Uh, da -da -da -da. Boop. Uh, does this, do, do six icons pass your defense? Unfortunately. All right, then. Uh, he will die for you, then, and bring the sword down on you, trying to deal damage. What's your resilience? Uh, my resilience... Six. Okay, then you're going to take uh, five wounds. Ouch. As... Valir comes down and swipes that uh, and swipes the sword down. It hums. It clashes against yours. And you're able to slide it back into a parry, but the parry still cuts into your into your shoulder. Valir crosses blades with you and brings himself in close and almost a whisper, but almost more of like a, a low, predatory, like hungry, angry growl. You are a talented uh, a talented warlock. You were always a poor bladesman. And it's then, for anyone looking close enough, that as you're getting a look at the swords that are crossed between Lara and Valir, there's some similarity. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. My Emperor, I have noticed. My Emperor, I will illuminate the Xeno scum. Valir will then. I'm going to spend a second roll point to take to make another attack roll, as he is going to make an attack roll uh, right now, actually. Sad, your defense is four, yeah? My defense is four. Uh, he, as as uh, Lara, while he has his sword locked in with yours, he will bring one hand up and, and move to a holster on his side, where he raises an elegant-looking pistol that has a glowing red-hot component at the, at the bottom side of it. He will aim that without looking at the large base brain still dueling with, uh, with his three Corsair friends. And Zad, what's that resilience? Oh gosh, if you must know, it is 11. 11. All right, cool. You're going to take five wounds. <gasps> As a fusion pistol, a large bright lance of orange-white light goes off from that round and slides through, through through your shoulder. Armor and all. Could I make an argument it goes through his oblique? Because sure. I'd love to, yeah. Um, because I'd love to have him... Um, make a uh, willpower test really quick. I need to, I'll let you know as my DM, I need to roll uh, three icons or better. I don't. That's yeah. So what's going to happen is he's going to, and as if I'm, is it my, can I go next? Is, is it our turn? I mean, it's y'all turn. Valir took his second turn, so we're at the top of the round. May I? Because I'm going to, you can't stop me. Uh, he's gonna watch as that wound cuts through, and he holds his blood up, and he holds the like touches a bloody hand as he's probably staving off a blade, and seems to just fixate on it as he seems to hunch for a second. Another blade might come in. He'll just kind of step aside of it. Just you hear heavy breathing under the mask. I am frenzied. And I must use uh -oh. my actions to all-out attack. Uh, uh oh. So, um, I do gain a plus two bonus die to your melee attack dice pool, but I suffer a minus two to your defense until the start of your next turn. But it's not going to end um, until yeah. the work is done. So I, uh, I think I need to make a roll with my Astartes Combat Knight. Now, question: Are these Astartes considered a mob? Are uh, not yes, the Astartes? Yeah, uh, are, they, are the Eldari considered a mob? <laughs> The Corsairs are, in fact, a mob, yes. Okay, so I get one... I have again uh, three extra bonus die in that case. Yep. So I'm going to uh, roll this Astartes Combat Knife. I uh, Here we go. Uh, that is a one on the melee, uh, but I do have two successes, but I get three more D6s. So you sure let's do. get those rolled, because I definitely need them, uh, which are all three successes oh, and one extra, so that is... Uh, that is five total successes. Why uh, are you rolling so many wrath complications? I yeah, am I, wrath! Oh, 
I hold on to those for I, when he, I need them. I'm, I'm going to need them soon. I imagine in this case, he is like grabbing one of their swords in his hand, and he's going to thrust it particularly into that one. Um, yeah, absolutely. Might I roll damage, my lord? You don't need to. They're a mob. You killed three of them. And he just will like grab one blade, shove it into the sternum of this thing, and rip up as he throws it over his shoulder, quickly flip the knife, stab through the elongated helmet, and pull through the last one. The last things that we hear is Horacent. <laughs> Shove it right into uh, whatever ocular glands these xenos transpire as he wrenches it out and takes a more feral hunched form. The bloody ichor of the xeno uh, still held on the combat knife in his hand long enough to surely spear most people in this room. Well, that you hunch over the three de dead Eldari Corsairs who were once uh, coming at uh, who, who were coming at you. I'm gonna hold that wrath critical uh, or that wrath complication until later. I feel I am the wrath complication. <laughs> Oh, don't but worry, we'll get there. He'll be um, great. Plenty of wrath right now. Good. In fact, actually, I'm going to spend it right now. As Valir will look over and see three of his comrades die, and a lot more being illuminated now and unable to, uh, to keep track, he will look back at the rest and mumble something in, El in, in Eldari, which I'm blanking on the exact translation for right now. You'll have to give me, give me, I'll give it to you later. But for those of us in, our, in the party who can speak bits of Eldari, you're able to clearly translate it as get the ship going. As the back four or five Corsairs begin to start of lay cover fire and begin to back off towards the ship. Uh, speaking of which, they'll take their turn now. Uh, and since Zad's no longer engaged, why don't we put some fire on him? Yeah. How's how's some shuriken pistols sound for you, baby boy? Does that sound like a fun like a fun thing we could do together, if, you and I? If I might, since I didn't move i did full out attack but it still lets me uh -huh. do a move could they mm -hmm. shoot at me and then i move into melee with them as they shoot at me happily no question perfect they shoot at me and i can i can run be running at them yeah all righty then let's go ahead and have a bunch of them do that thing they do here comes four shuriken pistols so uh, that will absolutely absolutely pass my defense yes uh damage is going to be uh given that i only roll that Listen, you will take one wound. Ah, no. He will just, yeah, absolutely just running past this, hitting its previous wound, I imagine, agitating it. And yeah, you're all, you're all hearing him scout, shout a lot of Horus! You're not here, buddy. You gotta calm down. You're not your dad. It's okay. I <laughs> fucking mean you don't get to tell me where my dad is. I am you're my right. dad. I, I, li I literally don't. It's true. Um... That said, uh, we're back to you guys' turn, as more Corsairs are still sort of moving through cover and closing in on, on all on the rest of you. A lot of them are definitely turning and putting their fire on Zad as he is now a speeding bloody bullet in the middle of them. Uh, but others are still trying to move around the outskirts and, and flake around all of you. Valir is still swiping through and trading in melee with, with, uh, with Lara. Uh, who wants to go next? You said that they're moving back towards the ship in lane cover fire. Yes. I would love to take a moment, friends. But I'm gonna cast Infernal Gaze. Oh no. It's hallucinations. It's a simple one. It's a simple one. But I've already done the roll and it's five icons against their defense. It's more um, than a fuck enough. But uh it's essentially a wall. They find their backs against a wall between them and the ship. You'll find several of them just stop and bump and sort of bump and, and, and kind of like thin air for a lot of you, at least see it as sort of thin air, uh, and start looking back behind them. Valir quirks an eyebrow and just, clever sorcery, it will not buy you much time. And he is enough. And he leans in closer. I'm assuming by the guys you're wearing, that they don't know. He does not respond. 
And he just kind of closes and locks and locks swords tighter with you and continues to kind of duel with you in melee. Uh, anything you want to do besides casting that infernal gaze? Any you want to make any movements? You can you can try to back out of the engagement if you if you'd like. I would love to disengage. Then I would like you to give me an agility check. You can call it an acrobatic one if you'd like. Uh, that is one icon. Uh, one icon is going to be enough with complications. You will get to back off from Valir. However, he will, as your sword still remain locked, uh, bring his hand up under his and push upward. Take one wound as you back away, as you as you break the engagement. Uh, Valir looks at you all, spinning his sword, and kind of tries to weigh his options. Clearly recognizing this is getting a bit messy. He's down six Corsairs, which is not bad, but he's going to press on, certainly. As he points his sword forward, indicating to attack the two of you who are in cover, more Corsairs will come up and begin to turn at Arya and Barris. Uh, we're going to say Barris still has cover against these last blasters. So as they come in, Barris, your, your defense will count as two higher. <laughs> What's your uh, defense? Uh, my base defense is three, so with the cover, it's five. The cover helps you enough. As, once again, you are still able to be kept in cover as Arya presses down on you. Arya, here comes uh, some shuriken pistols at you. Your defense. Uh, two. That's definitely going to hit. Uh, your resilience? Nine. You're going to take one wound. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, Paris is going to return fire if no one has any objections. That sounds like a perfect time to pass back yep. as the camera will follow these Corsairs who are now closing in. They're maybe a few feet away from being in melee range with, with the two of you who are in cover to trying to sort of clearly flush you two out. Barris, you're up. Right. Um... Go ahead and give me the narrative. What's happening here? How's it looking as you're, as you're returning fire? All right. Um... All right. Um, I'm like I'm struggling to comprehend like what I'm struggling to envision like what the exact size difference is between Arya and Barris because like she's in her armor, so I imagine she's like bigger. She's boy. probably got you by at least a couple inches, maybe like a foot at most. Okay. The armor doesn't come with heels. Okay. It's just really bulky. Uh, <laughs> Because Warhammer and Practical Design don't belong in the same sentence together. <laughs> and my balls are so larger than my head! A part of me wants to be like she's swinging like to the left and I'm... and I like... geek out from the right to, with my with my gun. I'm for it! Um, go yeah. for it! Take it! See the narrative, babe! That's what, this, that's what we're here for! You see the story, let's go! Cause like, if I'm behind cover then I'm just taking top shots. Yep. Go ahead and you're assuming you're attacking the Corsairs then? Yes. You bring your gun up and go ahead and make that attack roll for me. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I mean, the first one that you made was... Uh... For context, you could all out attack and thus technically attack twice, but that would mean you're, you're minus yeah. two for your next defend roll. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, so I got three sixes and a five. Uh, and that is, critical. yeah, that is, yeah, more than enough. You hit a couple of them. Go ahead and roll your, you didn't roll damage die. Let me just see how many you kill. Uh, you said you rolled three sixes and a five. Yeah, yeah so that'd be six. Seven That's seven there. total. Uh, so yeah, uh, Boris, go ahead and describe how you bring your hand cannon up and kill four people. Four people, goddamn. Um, with one shot? Jeez. I mean, no, no, you, you able, you're able to put out multiple shots, obviously, you're, oh, it's okay. a mob, you're multi-attacking. Alright, alright. Um, okay, so I, like, peek up, so I, like, so, I'm in cover, so, like, I peek up from, like, basically below the, below Arya's, like, arm. There's a giant cauldron. <laughs> yeah, like, after the shurikens whiz by, like, I basically, like, twirl around and just go, like, Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, good pew. We love a good pew. 
you're able to put there there are about three corsairs who are closing in on you guys with shuriken pistols you shoot one you shoot literally shoot through the hand and it drops to the ground you drop to the ground screaming another you kick in the shoulder they spin and hit the ground the third you catch right in the middle of the forehead and they just flop over a fourth who is putting fire with you from a last blaster from behind cover comes out from around an angle and you're able to put one straight through the middle of the center mass they fall back in that cargo container clutching at their chest and falling over dead uh, I suppose it's their go now, and there's not many of them left. Uh, in fact, the only ones who went, who can go now, uh, are I have shuriken pistols and are going to aim those at, I guess, Sad because he's right there. So we'll do we'll do a little bit of that. Uh, actually, you know what? They'll they'll do the stupid thing, try, try to close them with their corsair swords. Uh, so three of them will charge into melee with you again, Zad. Uh, here comes that. Seven, in your defense. Even if I was, yeah, even if I wasn't frenzied, yes. All right. In that case, uh, here comes damage. Resilience. Uh, resilience continues to be an eleven. I keep forgetting it's an eleven. Uh, yeah. In that case, yeah, you once again don't take any damage. Just chunking aside these swords with just his with his forearm and blade, it's just Horus! Uh the last one of them who did not uh charge in to stop uh, to attack sad is currently turning to the uh to the uh the uh, to, to the wall behind them and they are going to make a second mastery test <sighs> and with five successes that's enough as they will push and at least for themselves that wall illusion will crumple down in, in, in stone blocks and then shatter against the ground like glass as the illusion breaks for them and they're able to make begin to make a run for the ship uh that person is now sp is sprinting for the ship they will probably reach it in maybe the next i'm gonna say assuming combat is six seconds probably the next 18 seconds maybe 12 if they're if they really if they're really gunning it uh so with that we pass it back to another one of you i think that just leaves me right sure does uh, how many of them are left? Uh, there are three fighting Zad, one mm -hmm. left shooting at the two at, at the two of you, uh, one running for the ship, and then Valir. Uh, I think Arya is just going to. Can... Hmm? No, we, we can just... also like can Barris, um, like as he's doing his thing. Like, after he shoots the guys, like, can he, like, signal to Arya, like, they're, uh, they're trying to escape in the ship? Um, or, like, or, like, you know, like, focus on the ones trying to get away, or... Sure. Uh, I think Arya's gonna... Then you will handle this, the, handle this, you know, scum, and I will bring justice to the ones trying to escape and Arya is going to move like book it after the, the the running one and like you can like you can hear as she's tapping the ground with her glaive which is sort of like spark igniting it with uh, electricity as she goes to sweep at it with the long with with the reach all right I'm gonna four extra it's got four meters extra reach yeah, so this is definitely going to be still be even with the four extra meter reach. It's definitely still a charge attack, meaning you are going to be at a, at plus two extra die on your attack here. But you're going to be minus two your next time you have to, you have to defend. So, but I hope you kill this guy. Works for me. Uh, okay, no sure. They yeah, yeah, technically no still count as a mob. They technically still count as a mob. So we're gonna we're gonna roll attack, yeah. and I forgot to add roll. No, so we're gonna roll another two d uh, another two, right? Yeah. 2d6. So that's... Oh, uh, wow. Um, so, why don't you tell me how you not only kill the guy currently shooting at you and Barris, you also kill one of the three jumping at Zad and the guy you were running at. Go ahead and describe that for me narratively, if you don't mind. Okay, so I think what Arya does is... So she has enviable grace like it looks like she's just flying across the battlefield in fact her chapter is known for being for their mobility across um well the planes that is what they are known for so she yeah. runs across with one sweep as the sparks fly uh, um, 
lops off the head of the first one aiming at Varus. She turns, swings the glaive around as it spins, and dives after the th the second one, which is aiming for the ship. And then with the last bit, she turns and throws uh, with her other hand her chain bayonet at the oh. at one of them going after uh, Zad Kiel. Yeah, the the decapitated one literally just the, the headless body just sits there and falls over spur the finger triggering with rigor mortis to pull the trigger a little bit as it shoots off into the distance the second one going for the ship is literally impaled down your naginata as, as you swipe as you swipe down sweeping I, I, you swipe not not that's not, yeah, not I'm, I'm, it's one movement right so you have the oh, first yeah. one lop so, the head complete the movement yeah so with the, with, so with the complete movement you just swing through and cut through the middle of its back cutting through all that cr that crimson armor and the flesh of this of this eldari blood spills out against your armor as it falls as he falls over on the ground still spurting blood from its back you turn and throw the chain bayonet it embeds into the back of the head of one of the eldari fighting zakael it sputters and jitters as the back of its skull and brain matter gets chewed and eaten up by the chain and it falls over dead in front of zad uh we're running out of enemies here, ain't gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> I guess, I guess, I guess Valir should go now. Uh, he's gonna sort of close in on uh, on Lara again, slowly, uh, and try to make a charge attack. It's gonna make him, no, not, not charge attack, but a regular attack. Before that, he's going to speak, as he's sort of, again, trying to like trade with you back and forth with the sword, and just, I do not understand. You have to know what we are doing. What we are stopping. The Monkai are fools. They would let the Yingir awaken. Earth, you okay over there? Uh, no, it's all fine. Don't call I the fire question department. Marks. Giant question marks. That does not sound good. Everything is okay! They are... They are on this world. Did you hear what I said? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, he, uh, he kind of, like, takes a second to sort of, like, click, uh, clutch, uh, click close to you and just... This, indeed, is a place where they slumber. One among thousands, 10,000 years fighting them. Would you allow them to awaken again? Why didn't you share this sooner? Why you else? avoided bloodshed. Why else would I be here? Did you not know? You, you don't. I have lived he... amongst the Monkai for generations. No, I did not. Then the Monkai don't know either. And for that, they are a danger. You would let a few filthy monkeys risk the galaxy? There's a moment where she lowers the sword. Just and he of, stops. I'm not continuing this fight. And he stops and just... Then let me leave. Let my troops leave. And he points to the ship. On that ship is a Yingir artifact. The humans believe it a bauble from their pasts. We raid their ships to keep them away from things they have no ten dealing in in our ratings we save this world let us leave Edelvada this is the vibe what did, what did you let me roll for a vibe check you know I'm gonna say this is probably so let me pull up a character sheet real fast huh Probably some kind of like I'm gonna say insight. Probably is what your goal is for like getting a vibe of somebody. 
that is one icon. Uh, with uh, one icon. What are you looking for plus, here? There's a round of plus two in the you chat. You have plus two in the chat, so add two more dice to that. Two more, yay! Ah, uh, that is Thank you. two more, so that's three total. With three successes, what are you looking for? I'm trying to figure what is fruit out of this. Based on the shipping logs that I found, did they list what was on the ships? I think it said various well, ores for this one. Yes. Several of some of them do say what their hauls are, and some of them are pretty mundane things. Some of them, however, do have redacted details. Uh, and if you notice, a lot of them that have redacted details are the ones that are lost. One or two of them are definitely uh, the normal ones that got lost, definitely. But what you know more than that, Edelvada, is a prophecy. And you are aware that, well, 10,000 years ago, excuse me, 10 million years ago, at the end of a long, bloody, disastrous war across the entirety of the galaxy, the stars rent in twain. An enemy slept, slumbered, went away. And your people, your kind, flourished, grew fat on the wealth of the galaxy. So many treacherous foes have, arisen, have arisen to, to face you all since then. Your species lies on the brink of its collapse. A dying star in a dying galaxy. You have foretold that human folly has awakened the great enemy. Only bits of them. Only the first of them. But in time, when the call comes, the great king will return. He will wake the legions. The gray tide will sweep across the stars and blot out the galaxy. And it begins with a choice. Those are the words you remember scrawling down in your journal after you had those visions. That, however, was a very, very long time ago. You're muted, friend. All right, I'm trying to think of how to move forward with this. You got it. I'll bring the I'll bring the sounds back in for now. In fairness, Valir has seen you slightly lower the sword and has stopped advancing towards you. His sword is still at the ready in front of him, but he is, after saying "Let us leave." He has just stopped. There are very few Corsairs left shooting, and the and you know they're not really bothering to put up too much of a fire to a fight. Your friends look a little hurt. One of them a little out of it, let's say for now. Uh, but otherwise, the scene remains generally sort of quiet. Strange to say in the middle of a battle. And then I think the next move that she takes is, yes, even Z well, maybe not Zed kill. She's already gonna have a target on her. With Arya and Baris, um, she does. They're removing a Necron artifact. How do you... Yes, good question, or...? Um... I mean, that was, like, trailing off me. 
in the middle of the sentence. Um, I also have a question. How much does Arya know about the Necrons? You know? That's a fantastic yeah, how much question. Does about the Necrons too? I'm gonna give you both the same answer. Probably not much. Necrons, Necrons. It's like, I think Arya is actually gonna say this out loud. It's like, Lara, what the fuck is a Necron? Dang it, Laura, we are killing Zeus. Hey, Zad, I see you have a hand up. I'd only like to say, um, <clears throat> Horus! Because I still uh, yeah, have people that... to kill. Yeah, that's still raging right now. Uh, <laughs> Valir notes that and just says, Call off your brute, and my men will cease fire. <laughs> he's not gonna have. Well, he's he's not gonna have men. Oh, oh. You explain to them what you told me. If I must, though, I find dumbing down my competition for humans to be grating on the tongue. Speak up, which if we stop, we're here that, to kill Xenoskeleton. Necrons are worse than the Eldari. You have better things to put your focus on, sister. Worse than Xenos? <laughs> yes. Explain. Valir actually swings his sword, embedding it in the ground, and raises his hand. Hold your fire! And looks over. Your witch speaks truth in that same slightly twisted low gothic. The Ying Year, Necron, as you know them. Zad? I, um, am frenzied. Yeah, huh? I'm noticing that. How do we bring him out of the frenzy? Ooh, interesting question. Yeah. Uh, about that. If you ask the uh, Blood Angels, uh... if you ask the Blood Angels, kill him. That's 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 what that that's that's the answer. Uh, but to be fair, no. my, my 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 frenzy does end at the end of the turn if I don't sustain. I believe, uh, according to uh, the frenzied condition, it ends at the end of my turn. Hmm. Uh, if I don't continue to see blood in melee combat. I'm hmm. saying that in a rule sense, not as a character. I'm aware. So, uh, what I'll say is ha currently happening is that Zad has that last Corsair that was attacking him by the throat and is like squeezing hard enough that the armor is cracking. Uh, and so, if any of you have anything you'd like to do, sort of like you know, skill check maybe or anything else you think might be able to calm your boy down, now would be the time to do it. No, I think one that he's absolutely going to hate. I, I it, before you do that though, I think Arya is going to uh, hold Witch, and she's going to walk over to uh, Zadkiel while singing. Uh, I don't think at any point at this time she has stopped singing except to, to ch talk, um, and is going to change from a battle litany to one of the uh, like a, one of the more common prayers to uh, the Emperor. Sort of uh, a very so, like, have you ever heard like a Gregorian chant? It's very like droning, calming sort of uh, tune, mm. uh, and I think she's going to sing that well. Uh, specifically around, uh, you said you were wounded in your obliques, right? Yes. Uh, I think uh, Arya is going to actually uh, start working Medicaid on uh, Zadkiel and just sort of like dodge any swipes he's making while he's. T Go ahead and make a Medicaid roll for me. Alright, uh, I get advantage, and I think I get up some pluses with my Kyurgens. They kit. sure do. And I also get an advantage for doing this on a, uh, an Imperial. So... You have a plus two from chat. And I get a plus two from chat, so, uh, I don't remember exactly how many plus twos I get, to be honest, for my Kyurgen tool. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say... Roll two extra die for now, and we'll, we'll figure it out later. Alright, so roll two extra die, and then a plus two, and then a plus one from Imperium. <laughs> okay. Alright, let's see it. 
two, plus two, plus one. Where's the where's the roll? Here we go. This is the roll. Uh, that is. Oh, okay. So it only. Why did it only roll four? Doesn't matter. Uh, roll your extra dice. Just regular, regular fix it. It's fine. All right. So we're just gonna roll. Uh, that's a plus five d six. Wow. Okay. Um, plus another. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes total. Yeah. So, sister, without having a still. Uh, a, a still subject getting proper healing done on the on the fusion gun wounds that Kale took will take t is not going to be doable. You can, however, at least allow uh, the basics. Hmm? So, um, oh wait, I thought I had an ability that lets me. Um, ah, I can make a Medicaid test without uh, to perform to heal others without su suffering a uh, difficulty penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, da -da -da -da. So. What, what ends up happening here, effectively, is uh, Zad turns begins to kind of swing and swipe, literally with the Eldar still in their hands, just swinging and swiping at everyone around them. <laughs> Arya lays their hands on the wound in your oblique. That same glow from inside the uh, from inside the back of the Goliath truck, last session, lighting around their hands as they slowly begin to work. And it doesn't fully heal the wound, but it at least begins to work the, 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 the basics of your advanced studies biology on you, Zad and slowly begin the healing process as the wound is al already closing given that you're a space marine. And you are slowly feeling that blood haze drain from the back of your brain. And I think as that like, if we could shift the camera to the um, Corsair perspective, like mm -hmm. the glass of the helmet uh, is like cracking mm -hmm. and they'll just release and it'll fall to the floor. <sighs> and he'll he'll like raise an arm and look down at the sister applying work to his wounds and just a lot of heavy belabored breath no words can suit the situation why is that kind of cute I don't know in like a weird way <laughs> sorry <laughs> cause it's me no, it's <laughs> true. Sure. You are you are adorable, sir. No, but he absolutely, he pauses and allows mm -hmm. uh, any final work to be finished. And... The the corsair falls to the ground, clearly gasping and heaving breath through their lungs as they clearly weren't breathing for about the past three to five minutes. Amazing, they're still alive. To be being perfectly honest. And... Uh, the the other remaining corsair raises their last blaster up and sort of comes out of their cover looking at Valir, and Valir just looks at them and nods, and then looks at all of you. Sleeping beneath this planet is an ancient threat, one of the oldest sentient species in the galaxy, a species with a bane for all that lives, an ancient grudge they seek to collect, an empire they will rebuild. This planet is doomed should they awaken. My intent was to avert that by keeping the Monkai humans unaware of the Yingir. Assuming we could avert the worst of their mining operations, we could keep them from digging too deep into the planet's crust. When we realized how far the human infestation stretched into this planet, we realized that it wouldn't be tenable, and instead decided to keep them away from Yingir, ar from Yingir artifacts. We have done well for the most part. Do you see now, humans, the folly you would wrought in stopping us? None more treacherous than you would inflict by the creation of Slanesh. You know nothing of that great time, of the disaster which befell my people, of the lives we saw cast in the Empyrean. If you wish humanity to avoid that fate, you will allow me to leave with that artifact. I will do as my commander wills, as it is my sworn duty to follow his orders. Though the Codex Astartes orders you eliminated. Well, the armored monkey is obedient, if nothing else. Question. Um, 
Though it is not in my sheet, I have fought an extensive campaign against the Eldari. Uh huh. Um, could I have known like one shitty fuck you phrase to say in Eldari? <laughs> Purely mm. out of spite. But I, no, you know what? No, no, no. I would not learn such a filthy Xeno <laughs> language. I simply yeah. say, the Emperor's light will shine and burn upon thee. Though the Emperor's retribution is not to visit upon you today. As with all folks of the Imperium, it will visit you eventually, the sister. Yes, yes, Zealotry is wonderful. More important, however, am I to leave here with the artifact? Commander. Our mission here was to discover the cause of missing tides the Empire. And you have done so, have you not? The politician negotiated with me and assured me that if I was allowed to... Well, assured me that if I picked my targets selectively and only, well, limited the number of ships that I pillaged and pirated from, he would redact the log to ensure that the wider Imperium kept their eyes away from me. It would appear he failed in doing that. And with his downfall... Relations between this planet and the Imperium will proceed as normal. You are asking if we will leave the sector, cease pirating these planet. I am asking if you will. I am asking if you will continue to draw the ire of the Imperium towards this planet. If you will, then I'm afraid I cannot agree to your terms so simply. Negotiator. Rare amongst your kind. Your deal is sound. My Corsairs will leave these will leave this space for other sectors. And we'll find other places to find our lot. That will mean, however, that the Monkai are on their own. And be it ten or ten thousand years. And they will make another mistake. And when the Yingir awaken, it will not be our fault. then we will shoulder that responsibility if necessary. Hmm. It's like the friends you've made here, Laura. You may take your prize and go. Very well. He picks up his sword spins it and sheaths it at his back looks at his two remaining corsairs they begin to move towards the ship parting word looking directly at lara mayhap with the stakes so high secrecy is not the word of the day good luck then He said there is no response. Can you repeat what you said for me? Oh, yeah, sorry, no problem. He just said, parting word then, perhaps with the stakes this high, secrecy is not the word of the day. Good luck then. I didn't catch the last part. Good, good luck. Just it's not the word of the day. Uh, good luck, then. Still figure out the new game on this mic a little bit, you know. I'm working on it. I I got you. Don't worry. Cool. Thanks. Part of it can also just be Discord for being lucky for me, but it do be like that sometimes. Hmm. There's a very slight nod. indicator of goodbye he nods back and directly to your mind till we meet again then my love perhaps next time we won't be drawing swords 
At least not until you Spec. work on your aim. At least not until you work on your sword arm. Then he'll turn and begin to walk towards the ship, which is already having his engines power on further. And I think as you all sit once again in the carnage of blood and bodies and a mystery unraveled, I'll pass it back to Zad, to Zad real quick. In the carnage of what he's done, I think Zach Hill like notices the blood on his forearms, the damage his armor has taken for the first time as the, the strength of combat leaves his body and as he feels up at the mask for like the blood smear he pulls from it he kind of by by his divine right no I have failed you and will actually fall to his knees for probably the first time anyone's ever seen him it's potent. I think we're going to stay on that moment, the camera slowly panning up from the massive armored thud of Zadkiel's power armored bulk falling to his knees, recognizing that he had fallen to a long, hallowed curse of his legion turn chapter. And I believe with that, we'll give ourselves a little bit more of a break so we can come back and wrap the session up. Because I still got a little bit of fun to sprinkle on these guys. <laughs> you all can touch that dial or their browser. Thanks for popping in and saying hi to us, Raiders. We'd love to see you all hanging out with us in chat. Stick around. The end of the session gets wild. We'll see you all in just a few minutes. Bye bye And we return to tonight's episode of By a Shadow of Peace as the party have finally caught the culprits of the loss of tides here on Kata 2. Not simple human pirates, but a group of Eldari Corsairs. Not simple raiders, but perhaps, in some twisted way, saviors trying to stop the humans on this planet from awakening the Necron tomb world that slumbers beneath this planet's crust. The party, now aware, aware of that, has a contemplative, perhaps mostly silent, journey back towards Kata 2. The spaceport, or I guess, it's not spaceport, the docking areas, for transports and other vehicles arriving in caravans is thankfully slightly less busy. The line's not as long to find a good docking sport. And thankfully, you aren't accosted by armed inquisitorial crusaders and a random inquisitor when you get out of your grill ass truck this time. Last episode was great, by the way. <laughs> you find yourselves walking through the well, I guess moving through from the docking area, from the the, 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 the docking and landing and, and loading areas, into I guess the first sort of first of the several hub areas around around the Kata Two, and you're noticing that it's crowded. There's a big, big crowd. It's moving. The crowd is moving in a direction, but there's a, there's a big crowd of people around. Um, point of order. I am. Oh. Still in armor, but I will um, doff my helmet. So, uh, whatever reactions they might have to. Uh... Oh, yeah. People are definitely not stopping, staring, and looking at you. In fact, a good chunk of the people from the crowd are stopping and looking over just so you see that. What's going on? What's going And, like,. It's hard to hear because there's so much chatter and mumble going on, but as you're walking into this crowd, because it's kind of moving in into your direction regardless, you're noticing that some people are looking over and wondering, what is that? Who? What? Is I've never seen that kind of look. Must be here because of the governor. Zedkiel is very much in a contemplative state as at this point, but we'll reach, uh, I imagine, a certain knot of crowd of onlookers and motion. Make way for his emperor's justice. Uh, the crowd slowly begins to part. It is a massive crowd, though, so it's not going to be easy to just, like, work your way through these people, as there are I'd wager thousands of people in this crowd. And as they're moving, you can tell that there's this is clearly a crowd that is centered around something is hurting this group in a direction. It's hard to tell given that none of you really well, except for maybe Boris, know the layout of the city super well. 
but there is a huge swell of people all moving in one direction. I offer a thanks to those who move aside. But As we'll... several of them uh, completely part their, their way for the massive armored figure moving. Friends, Zad is parting the crowd and moving through the middle of it. What are you all doing? Probably following behind him in the uh, in the wake that he has created before the uh, crowd reconvenes. Anybody else? I think Arya has uh, taken off her battle sister's war gear because it's a little too cumbersome in these crowded streets. But she's still in her regular habits. It's very it's very much like not in the least bit. Uh, Discreet, bright, bright red, and white accents, and uh, she's also fall. She's, I think, taking um, like a little bit uh, behind and to the left, following behind in that wake. And Lara is following behind. As you move behind with the rest of the group, it's almost impossible for you all to notice that you are drawing eyes as a group lots of people in this crowd not all of them because there's so many of them but lots of people in this crowd are turning to look as they see a massive armored figure and their accomplices move through the the slowly parting crowd it is however as you're starting to get into the crowd you recognize whatever is moving this crowd whatever this group of people is gathered around is in the middle of this crowd of thousands. Then I move to the middle. You're moving towards the middle, Damn as sacrist. again, there are still ha- there are still thousands of people around. So it's not exactly easy to be able to you know to to uh, to move through uh, to to move through the crowd. However, there is still a gathering of... Uh, so you're also able to easily part behind the, the, the wake that Zach Keel makes. You're all able to move through that. Anyone who wants to sort of, like, get an eye on the crowd, figure out what's happening, look for signs, or otherwise investigate, make any actions here, now would be time to let me know. What you got for me? Um, I'm gonna poke around in some people's heads. As right, one does. Easily. Fair enough. Um, Give me some psychic mastery, Lara, and hold the result for me. I guess since Barris is like the one from here, he'd probably be on the lookout for anything that he'd consider like out of the ordinary in a large gathering. Hmm. Give me. Give me an awareness roll and hold the result for me. I love to roll an awareness as well, if possible, just for the mood of, uh, just for any concealed weaponry or uh, tricks that might be about. All right. And lastly, Arya, what are you up to? I think, uh, well, I mean, Arya, like, we're in a crush of people. People, it's, that's physically dangerous like that kind of, that the sheer number of people will actually like squeeze people and kill them so i think Arya's is actually scanning the crowds for anyone who's injured and maybe like shouting for like hey like does like like, do, like maybe like you know shouting at people like hey move right because if you're talking about thousands of people you can literally crush people to death in a crowd all right in that case we'll handle these actions in the following order We'll start with Barris. You're moving through the crowd, looking for any signs of anything out of the ordinary, and it's definitely not normal for this many people to be in this tight of a crowd moving through the city at one time. And as you're looking around, you're noticing that there is definitely a lot of excitement, interest, perhaps air of celebrity in the crowd. These people are all clearly following someone they want to be around, talk to, listen to, be near, look at. That's the immediate vibe you're getting first off, Barris. Laura, you peek into some heads. You wave out that's like your, your psychic mastery. Give me the result of your psychic mastery roll, and Barris, give me the result of your awareness roll. Okay. 
Um, seven icons with a six on the wrath die. Understood. Uh, I rolled one regular icon, super icon, and a six on the wrath. So Alrighty. Grand it. All right. Barris, you are scanning the crowd. You're not exactly get. You're kind of just looking and looking around, trying to get a sense of things. You almost kind of start doing that sort of like, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, excuse me, sort of thing that people do. Lara, you peek into a few heads, and you notice that lots of people are asking lots of questions. There are plenty of people who are looking in the direction of you all and wondering, who is that armored giant? And then maybe even one or two, just maybe one or two, who say, there's no way an Astartes is on Kata too. Which, in your time spending, you know, long time living with the humans, do you know that very few people know what a space marine is? So those people are certainly aware that whatever thing has got a space marine walking through a crowd on high, on high B Segundus and Kata 2, it's probably a big deal. And they maybe don't want to be around for it. Outside of that, other people are excited, showing interest. Not in you all, but in, again, that figure who is clearly in the middle of this crowd, who you're able to, by peering at minds and looking at the people tell, is probably Orme Uten, the planetary governor. It seems like he's probably just on a stroll from his place of domestication, from of where he's living, to somewhere else. But by virtue of being a natural, you know, man of the people who likes to talk to people and give grand speeches while walking around, this cloud has built up around him while he's just walking around. That seems to be the nature of this occasion. Sadakeo, you are looking for concealed weapons. Yes. Anything that looks like the sound of a sign of attack or anything like that. Indeed. And you and you are not finding anything. This is a massive thrall of civilians, industrial workers and hive sorters and miners who have just managed to find some time off of their like long, long shifts to just spend 10 minutes, maybe 10 minutes of the 30 they get off in the day to follow around this politician and listen to him talk about how things should be better for them. No one here, at least in the way you can see, appears to be seriously armed. Certainly not in any way that could threaten you. People are still parting their way for you. In fact, you almost trample a few people who don't, who don't notice you quick enough. But a lot of them are looking up at you in awe, wonder, and no small amount of fear. And in fact, one of them falls over sort of hobbled. They are older, much older, using a walking stick to aid their moving, even though they have a bionic left leg that sort of creaks and, and words with circuits. Arya, this is the person you notice as being slightly injured who you come over to and approach to offer help. You offer your hand to them and they take yours, looking up and seeing your... Is there anything notable that would denote you as a sister right now on you, Arya, that you can see? I mean, besides, like, the clear habits, the, uh, the rosary she's wearing, and the book, she, it, she's very obviously a sister, I think, right now. In which case, he gets up. Or at least a sister hospita hospitale, Correct. maybe not a battle sister, but, like, you know, definitely a medic. This elder person, looking possibly like an old woman, rises and just, My eternal thanks, sister. Emperor's blessing be upon you. His blessing upon you, and, uh, can I just give her a quick, like, once-over with Medicaid, or...? Absolutely, please. Alright, uh, I, I get, I get a, I get a plus four to that, um... Alright then. Well, is she, I'm, I'm assuming she's a pyramid, she's not a pyramid, yeah. she does not get the plus, she does no. not get the extra dice. Yes, she absolutely is. So, with your seven successes, I think even possibly more than that, um... Yeah, okay, so, with that number of successes, uh, you are able to give this woman a once-over, and just looking over her once, you can immediately tell that she is suffering from a lot of just, like, muscle atrophy from having been injured for a while and not being able to work and just now getting back to a shift. And for someone her age is just not doing well on her, she needs something to just ease that muscle pain in her body and give her some time to just get some good rest. You thankfully probably have a good solid, uh, like, pain suppressant, uh, like, you know, like, pill st stash in your Terugian tools. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, Arya's gonna just 
uh, reach into her uh, Kyurgen's tools, like pluck out a a very like a, a not like one of like the uh, soldier strength and aesthetics, but like just a regular one, um, and offer it to uh, this old uh, this old woman and just please rest. Your <sighs> your body will thank you if you take the time to rest a little more. This should alleviate your pains. She looks at you, taking the, 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 the medicine and shaking hands. Kindness is so rare in the Imperium these days, especially in a place like this. It's why they flock to him, the planetary governor. They believe in his kindness. They believe that he will do better. Savor that kindness for me, sister. Spread it as far as you can. Um, I noticed this person as well, correct? Mm-hmm. At this point, uh, he would, uh, Zadkiel would, would trudge his way over and, and kneel with a big thud. Are you well, citizen? They just... I, uh, I, 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 I... Ease, y- 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 yes. ease, sister. Be at peace. Y- yes. I believe I will be well. Thanks to our sister's kindness. And she gives a very slight bow. She's indeed a blessing. Now. I must return to his divine work. As must we all. But. Should you need assistance. I will offer it. And she stares in awe at the armored giant in front of her. And just slowly nods. sister to our work and he'll of course raise he off of his knee and uh, continue on the two of you carry on Arya you feel a slight lightness in your soul something perhaps you might have needed after the things you've experienced recently and it's as you feel that lightness that levity you are all slowly approaching towards the middle of this crowd it's getting more densely tightly packed as you started part your way through ZKL. In the middle is a figure, at least some of you have all have seen before. A darker skinned man with braided hair back. He is statuesque and has a large beard and is dressed in a blue uh, fineman's uh, uh, noblery. He preaches. It is hard to hear him as he's not using any amplification over, uh, over the din of the crowd. But he's clearly preaching and talking to these workers and miners will come out to see them, hit sit them, going into the crowd and shaking hands and offering pats on shoulders as he says and offers promises of better things, says that the Imperium is one on their sweat and labor and blood, that their lives are not a simple currency to be spent, but are the lifeblood of the Imperium. And thus, they are, he is promising that he will campaign on a platform of making the Imperium recognize their struggles, even on a planet as far away as Gate of Two, even with the Noctis Eterna, the Great Rift, tearing the planet open. He will promise that the Imperium will recognize the labor that they they have done here, and if they continue to work diligently, salvation will come. He will be sure of it. You are all slowly approaching the, uh, the, the, the middle of the crowd. You're together still. Anything you're saying to each other? What is the play, my lord? You're muted. I'd like to avoid making a scene if possible. Unavoidable, I'm afraid, at this point. I fear you're right. A bunch of rowdy civilians. Rest asking for asking for disaster. And we can merely request for a private audience. Can we not? That's one option. I suppose it beats crossing our fingers and hoping he'll come quietly. An inquisitorial seal should do most of our work. It need not necessarily even be in a an arrest for now. 
Fair enough. I think for now. In that case, should we wait until he finishes here or should we be direct? Personally, I favor being direct, but I'll hear dissent. I'll hear other opinions. You're the expert, are you not? That's why I'm waiting for someone to talk me out of it. Very well, let's go. And uh, Barris will walk up to. Uh, to Orme with uh, the rest of them, presumably in tow. You saw what's happening, friends? Yeah. All right, then. In that case, <clears throat> you all part the crowd as Orme Uten continues to give sort of uh, give his speeches. The crowd is still so densely packed that Zach Hill, even you have to actually start to apply some of your some of some physical force towards beginning to move this pressing mass of humanity that's gathered around to listen to this to this man speak, to listen to him promise to them, to listen to him represent them, to listen to him claim to be able to save them. The crowd begins to cheer with every phrase as he quotes from saints of old from old imperial generals who gave their lives in service, from people who brought colonization, salvation, and when all was lost, hope to cast away planets of the Imperium. He calls to old stories of triumph in the days of old. He calls to stories of genuinely simple imperial citizens being the linchpin upon which victory was won in grand conflict. He calls to all of these things, finally holding one small child's hand, leaning down, to take a small child's hand in both of his and shake it firmly as if greeting a full adult. He finally looks over as you all part the crowd, seeing the massive space marine first, then the sister of battle in their fine robes, then the desperado with their equipment strapped to them, then the mysterious psyker behind them, quiet and contemplative. Orbe Uten turns, sees all of this happen, when suddenly... The middle of his head explodes. And he falls to the ground. Dead. And with that, we bring tonight's session of Bio Shadow Peace to a close. Ah! See, I have competition for cliffhangers. <laughs> I want to thank you all for coming out to one more lovely episode of By His Shadow Peace, our Wrath and Glory epic. This has been a session coming. I told my party after the Eldar reveal and the Necron reveal that if they were wondering if the egg was cracked open, then it wasn't. Ah! It's cracked open now. Or snipers, oh, so the head clearly. Is head. Aha! Clearly orc snipers, according to my chapter's history. <laughs> and just the person that we could demand more answers from is silenced. Fuck! Isn't that just how mystery campaigns go? Ah! Friends, oh, I, I, regret uh, my, I regret my life choices right now. <laughs> well, friends, uh, I've been Young Foxy. This has been the Bio Shadow Peace cast, and they are incredible storytellers all in and of themselves. Uh, before I get us out of here officially, I will let them tell you who they are, where they can be found on the internet, and give a few brief words on what they have coming up so, they can, so you can be excited for them. We're going to do a different order this time because I like switching it up a little bit. As we're going to start with the incredible and incomparable master of horror and mystery themselves, who I draw so much inspiration for this game from. I'm talking, of course, about Meg Mysteria themselves. Oh, it's me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Meg and or Meg Mysteria. I got to play Laura Talon tonight, who is, you know, being ousted by her fellows. Um, 
as far as what I've got coming up, you can see me right here again on the 20th running my own eerie horror game called Last Transmission. I've got a couple of folks here as my players. They don't know what's coming. Nope. Nope. I know it probably After involved that. my wife, and I'm afraid for that. Yeah. Part of the fun is making them feel unease. Anyway, you will find me again on the 23rd over on Singularity Roleplay as for our next installment of Breaking Neon, a City of Mist campaign. Um, then after that, we're on a break for- I'm on a break for a little bit until we come back around to second Tuesday of next month for Camp Runner's Cross. Love that damn show. It's- it's gay- Gay panic. Gay, pa it's, it's, gay it's, panic. It's, it's, it's literally gay panic. Yep. A little bit of gay, a little as bit of As last night's, as last night's episode uh, foretold me uh -huh. it's just gay uh -huh. panic the whole time. Uh huh. But Anything else for you coming it. up? Well. Nope. That's it. Always lovely to have you here, with all the mystery included with your characters you tend to play. Sliding across and around, we talk next about. Just my bestest buddy right now, frankly. Someone who I'm feeling so very inclined and lovely to grow close to and meet. I feel like I found a kindred spirit, someone who just knows me utterly in the soul. Uh, I'm, of course, talking about the wonderful and amazing Turkey Scented, everyone's favorite Golden Retriever boyfriend. Oh, it is me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. I am Turk, or Turk Scented, if you have also just had your whole mind blown. That was Orme. Oh, like, oh, like Orme. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um... If you want to see more of me uh, in the things I do in my face and the words I say and all those wonderful um, things that I incur upon your sanity, um, then the next time you can catch me is next Tuesday uh, for more Galgleam, a Yiddish fantasy gone rogue, um, where we are maybe fighting a giant skeleton. Um, we love those. Things are going wild in all the campaigns I'm in, and I'm not sure how to feel about it. Uh, speaking of wild campaigns, hey, Lost Trans Last Transmission. Uh, well, I will also be there, and I will be the um, the Golden Retriever there as well. Um, of course, on the 24th, I will be back with more Oathsworn and obviously the Dragonless campaign, where I am running that one. It's Greek mythology and uh, high fantasy, so if you like that kind of thing and you like ghost ships, well... I think you might like this next episode. Um, then on the 25th and 26th, back to back, understand the mental stress I am incurring into myself um, because my planning is shit, but my thighs are legit. Um, I am running two back to back sessions of Call of Cthulhu over on uh, Lost Caravan. I will not stop. You cannot make me legally. Um, beyond that, I. I uh, will be back here on August 9th for more By His Shout of Peace. Um, and then there will be some more things to come, but that will be discussed later at a later date. I think y'all are great. I have been blown away, uh, just like Orme uh, in this <laughs> campaign. Uh, this has been so much fun. I think we've all had a great time. Um, I will speak for all of you as uh, you know the Emperor's Angel in this situation. But. Um, Make sure you support the people you see on your screen here. Uh, they're all incredible creators and deserving of your love, support, adoration. Um, but of course, not as much as the Emperor. Uh, so, uh, that is entirely too much out of me, and I return it back to our incredible storyteller. Well, I get to then turn it back over to yet another best fucking buddy of mine. Uh, someone who I feel, again, doesn't really get to show their chops when it comes to their talent for RP often, I feel, but they tend to really be able to really lens their their characters into very unique angles that I think always lead to them having sort of fun I'll, I'll give it I'll give it I'll give it out in stars. The point is, I think Dan's a really good fucking role player and should be proud of it in more in more ways than he is. So go ahead and talk, Dan. Come back here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I see you. I see you down there. See your hair. <laughs> Gorgeous locks betray you. <laughs> anyway, uh, whatever uh, the fuck that was. Um, uh, hi, I'm Wayne Medan. Um, I played Varus. I, what the fuck do I even have coming up? Um, 
Uh, I guess the next thing I'm doing here is, um, I think next Monday is The World Within You. Uh, on, yes, on the 17th. Uh, the World Within You is our uh, Jet Set Radio flavored uh, Void Heart Symphony campaign uh, that is run by the legendary Berman. Uh, I'm in that. Uh, and then I'm also in uh, Neon Afterglow, which will be two weeks after that which is the sequel to the very first campaign, or presumably it will be two weeks after that, uh, schedules permitting. Um, it's a sequel to our very first campaign that we ever did, Neon Lights and Night City, or Neon Night City Lights. Um, um, we uh, never really decided, or we never really uh, nailed it. We down did the... decide! Tate just didn't feel like ever saying it properly. I'll, go, I'll do it later. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not important right now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's going to be in Cyberpunk Red, is the system that that will be run in. Um, and uh, you get to catch up with the characters that started it all. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll pop up here and there, elsewhere, somewhere. Here's open. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad to have you here, friend. Uh, with that said, I also get the honor of passing it over to another incredible best friend of mine, someone who does get to flex their GM chops and their roleplay talent more and more here. So, but they get thankfully only do it here. We gave them an exclusive contract. So if you're not here on the online <laughs> roleplay, you don't know how fucking talented Michelle is, and that's your fucking problem that you should work on fixing. But I'll tell you all about that later. She can do it right now. Hey, it's me, Michelle. I don't exist on the internet except maybe here on Discord. Uh, so, uh, yeah, don't go looking for me elsewhere, uh, elsewhere for social media, because I don't exist there, sorry. Um, you can catch me here tomorrow, actually, for okay. our A Blade's Will campaign, our rotating, to, rotating uh, Naruto one-shot campaign. Uh, and this time will be a collaboration episode. Well, I say collaboration, but is it really a collaboration when you have two teams from, from opposite sides of the war competing for the same thing? PvP. PvP. That sounds like more of a competitive PvP. episode. <laughs> see. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things turn out. Still better um, win as... my riot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, your girlfriend's gonna be that. <laughs> your Steal better girlfriend. win or I riot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anywho, uh, if you want to catch me here, uh, you can also see me also playing our favorite cat, uh, also in The World Within You, in on Monday. Uh, or you can catch us, uh, catch me playing Arth, our, uh, human? Human? Pilot of in Stardust Ghosts. Uh, I'll run by Foxy here on Wednesday, so, uh, that's it for me. And I guess that brings it back up to me. Who's Foxy? The person she was just talking about. Hey, folks, I'm Young Foxy, a.k.a. Big Foxy. He's known as Fairy Fox, Philly's finest. It can be found on the internet at Young Foxy. That's Y-U-N-G underscore F-O-X-X-I. The underscore sometimes not there. So if you can't find me in one, find me at the other. Uh, I'm in a lot of places, namely them right here on the internet and Neon Lights Roleplay. A lot of them have already been talked about. Uh, as mentioned, I will be around for last transmission in about a week or so, uh, where we're gonna... Uh, I So if Turk plays Golden Retriever, I play the group's wife guy, past tense, question mark. Um, but you know what? It's fine, because I have my big, uh, my little bro and the crew, and it's gonna be fine. Uh, outside of that, I, of course, am also in Stardust Ghosts, my Gundam love letter themed No Amount of Armor campaign. It's got drama, it's got romance, it's got mecha, it's got humanity, it's got the lack of humanity. It's great. Um, outside of that, you'll find me uh, lounging around over on other, lots of other places. I'm in Neon Afterglow, like Dan mentioned. I occasionally pop up into a Blade's Will. I'm also in the premiere of Bite Marks Lunar Pulse. That is a uh, brand new campaign starting up here on, on the Alliance Roleplay this coming up Saturday the 15th. It is run by the incredible Al Lucart, uh, who you may know from Cold Hands Warm Hearts. It features a wonderful cast full of goofy little werewolves who are going to uh, go through pack drama and hopefully not kill and or fuck each other. We'll probably do it as one of those things. Um, outside of that, uh, I have nothing else I want to plug right now. So I will simply say that if you think the things that we do here in the Play are awesome and want to come hang out with us, please join our Discord. A link in the chat will be popping up as soon as they figure out whether or not my chat command will work. Uh, 
please hang out on our Discord. You get some memes about game about shows. You get some general chats about nonsense. You also get some overall hanging out about whatever is on your mind. If you like what you see, do, I'm gonna keep up when we do it. You can follow us on our socials. That's Twitter and other and Twitch, of course, right here. We are all available. Social social media will pop up right there. We have a card.co link you can follow. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and pass ourselves off here for the evening. So as we head to our stream ending screen, please make sure that you back home taking care of yourselves, each other, and everybody else around you. Good luck out there, soldiers. We'll see ya. <laughs>